And we should be live, I think. I never know. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna wait to see if I did it right or not. <laughs> One day I will start my stream properly. Probably. Or not. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna start in a few minutes, so I'm just gonna wait for people to show up and then I'm gonna jump into things. In the meantime, enjoy the music, I guess <laughs> you can hear it, probably. Okay, I can see a few people already here, a few comments. So I'm just gonna give a few more minutes for everyone to see that we are live. And then we can start the fun. Um, in the meantime, you guys who are already here, uh, can you hear me properly? Is the music not too loud? Is everything working out alright? Please let me know in the comments because uh, I'm back in Hungary, so I haven't used this setup in like a year, so I want to make sure that I am doing everything properly. So please give me feedback. <laughs> I muted my phone. <laughs> okay, so let's see the comments. Um, Wheezy, hey Sunny, hello. Little Mango, hello. Livestream is a go, yay. <laughs> uh, no Brega says hi. Millie Comics, oh, it's nice to see you here again. I'm so excited to see you live. How are you, Sunny? I'm doing good. Um, today is actually a pretty nice day. I had plenty of sleep, which didn't really happen ever since coming back to Hungary, so <laughs> today was kind of first, that's why I decided to do this live stream because today I, I feel the strength that I can do this. Um, Normal Comic Junkie, hello, hello there, uh, Little Mango, yes, um, Banff and Pow, <laughs> I guess. I probably butcher a bunch of names. Everything sounds great, awesome, awesome, that's, that's great, thanks for the feedback. Uh, Zemini, everything working. Sweet. Naftali Albert. Tali here, hi. Oh, nice to, he nice to see you here again. <laughs> it's always nice to see the familiar names and profiles and all that stuff, so it's it's always making me super excited. I love these streams and I love you guys, so... Uh, Mango, by the way, great drawing. Thank you! Um, actually, I'm, I'm only using this drawing to show you something interesting while I'm just talking and <laughs> we're waiting for, for others to show up. Uh, I did this artwork for a uh, special artwork that subscribers of Saturday M have, have already seen uh, because it appeared in issue 107, which was sent out to our subscribers yesterday. It's our newest issue and this is for a special image um, that is promoting our newest partnership uh, between Moji. So if you don't know about this yet, then you probably don't follow Saturday or any of our creators because Toonmoji has been a huge boom uh, for us in the last uh, few days, weeks. Um, we partnered up with them and um, we can create some super fun stuff with them because Toonmoji is a... Uh, oh, it's, it's a very interesting thing. It's uh, like, like a meme generator, but you can also add music and it's for GIFs. Or GIFs. <laughs> Um, so you can see a, a lot of fun stuff and, and, uh, and many more cool stuff uh, to come in the future, so, so definitely check it out. We have several hashtags for it uh, and everything, so, and, and also all of our creators did a very, very cool um, collaboration artwork uh, that uh, made its debut in H2107, which is super sick artwork. I love it on so many levels, so I, I can only recommend you guys to check it out. And of course, if you're not a subscriber, you can still enjoy your free issues. Uh, issue 106 just uh, was released as a free issue on the homepage. Uh, you can find all of the links in my profile or in the video description, so you can read uh, some of our issues for free. And 
yeah, uh, if you if you're subscribed to the magazine, you can already enjoy issue 107 and issue 5 of Saturday PM, which was also released just a few weeks ago. Alrighty, um, let's see uh, the comments. Also, if you hear some weird noises like dogs and stuff like that, just please ignore them because I have two puppies here with me, and they tend to be noisy. <laughs> Um, ready. Uh, Nathan S is waving. I'm waving back, but you you can't see me because I don't have my camera set up right now. So you 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 only will be seeing my screen and listening to my voice and probably the puppies as well. Um, Savage Beerars, hello, glad I'm here today. I missed your streams. Oh, nice to have you here, and yeah, I missed the streams as well. I, I actually wanted to do a stream earlier, like right after coming back to Hungary, but my last couple of weeks have been uh, a disaster. <laughs> like, I, I've been all over the places, been very busy taking care of too many things and everything, so today is literally the first day where I, I can feel a little bit relaxed and 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 feel rested enough to, to actually sit in front of the camera. Technically not because I, I'm not sitting in front of the camera, but you get what I mean <laughs> and, and do this stream. So 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 yeah, I, I plan to do these streams uh, more often from now on. Uh, things seem to be calming down a little bit. So so yeah, I, I'm not promising that I will do a stream every week, but I, I will try to do something uh, way more often. <laughs> Uh, Little Mango, I'm subscribed, just haven't gotten around to read 107. I've been subscribed since 100. That's awesome! And uh, yeah, I, I hope that you will enjoy issue 107. It's a pretty intense um, issue. And, and you know, it's kind of fun that you started subscribing from issue 100 because those are our interactive issues. Like, if, if you follow Tetherium for, uh, for longer now, uh, you could have seen that we had some crazy changes and uh, we include more and more interactive and animated features um, in the magazine. So, so that's something that is super exciting and, and, I, and I love it. <laughs> like with issue 107, uh, the interactive issue will have even the cover moving. Like that was super sick when I first saw it. I was like, am I dizzy? Maybe, <laughs> maybe there's something wrong with me. And then I realized, oh my god, it's the cover artwork moving. <laughs> that was super cool. So, so yeah, we are we are improving on many many levels. But um, it's been almost ten minutes that I've been just sitting here talking. So. I guess I'm gonna officially start the stream. So, welcome everyone to the Saigami Project. My name is Andrea Otelia Doni, and if you don't know me, I'm the creator of the manga series Saigami, published and serialized in Saturday AM, the world's most diverse manga anthology. You can find all information, links, everything you might need in the video description or in my profile, so you can check out my manga series Saigami. You can read the first uh, three chapters online for free, and you can also get the first two volumes of the series. Um, on Amazon, from Saturday M uh, web shop, or literally everywhere you can order books online. <laughs> so, so yeah, you, you can find it. And the artwork you can see here is also uh, from Saigami, featuring these two cinema rolls. <laughs> I love these girls. Um, but right now, what I will be working on during this scream, scream, I can't talk. <laughs> I've been talking Hungarian for the last two weeks and I'm having trouble with <laughs> English right now, so I'm sorry. So, in this stream, I'm going to be finishing up uh, a manga page, or at least I will try to finish up a page. Uh, I already teased it on my Instagram and I figured this would be fun to work on because uh, usually I always do sketches and inking um, during the streams. Of course, now I will do inking as well, but I will be working on some backgrounds. Boom. Yep. This is a freaking monster of a double page. I absolutely love it. Like, I'm having such a blast working on it, but I've been working on this for far too long now. So I will try to finish this um, during this stream. As you can see, I already made a bunch of progress, but uh, all the details and everything is, is just... 
the king forever. <laughs> like it's kind of sad because this was supposed to go in issue 107, but I just failed to make the deadline, so I was moved to an upcoming issue. And I'm I'm super sorry, and I apologize for everyone who was looking forward to reading Saigami in issue 107. That you know sometimes it just happens that. There was just so much on my plate that I just couldn't finish up these pages, and I, I couldn't uh, keep everyone waiting for me. So, yeah, you know, this is part of it. When when, when you fail your deadlines, you have to deal with the consequences. So, I'm not in the issue, but hopefully, I can finish uh, this page and uh, everything that I have left. And yeah, you will be able to read this issue very soon. Okay, so before I jump in, I'm gonna take a look at the comments and then I'm gonna start working on this after I find my pen. I have no idea where my pen is out there, please, okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Mr. George Dude, yo, Sanchez Knights, hi Sunny. Um, Oh yeah, um, actually there's something um, that you guys, or some of you guys started doing uh, a few live streams ago. So if you're talking to someone else in the chat, I would appreciate if you would use an at and their username to, to let me know that you're talking to someone else and not uh, directly to me. Because that will make it easier for me to read these comments because then I can um, basically skip through uh, the comments that are not aimed at me but um, are a conversation between you guys. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, Sanchez Night can stay for long, but have a great day. Thank you, and you know, um, the best thing in the streams is that you can always catch up later if you can't make it right now. So, so feel free to come back and see how it is, how it goes. Um, Sanchez Night's freaking awesome. Little Mango, wow, that is intense. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jersey, look at this beauty. <laughs> thank you. I, I, I really hope you like it. Like, <laughs> I, I wanted to have something that is just a blast of an establishing shot in, in this volume, so so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm super happy for this. <laughs> um, Millie Comics, it is amazing. I can't tell how impressing this is. I can't wait for the third volume. Thank you, yeah, I'm doing my best with it. <laughs> I need to speed things up, but yeah. <laughs> um, 99 Valleylands, hello, hello, nice to see you here. Uh, Cat Boha, geez, did your wrist hurt from this? This is so detailed. Um, not really, actually, because I was doing it in parts. So I spent like three different drawing sessions uh, completing uh, what you see here. Um, I actually made like a process uh, screenshot uh, for this. Uh, for my supporters on Patreon, so they've been following my process day by day as I was making. So first I only inked the parts in the background, I mean in the foreground, and then I started doing this area, then I moved over to this area, and then this. So I didn't ink all of this in one go. So that was easy on my wrist, worse on my schedule, but yeah, uh, I, I actually try to be very cautious not to strain uh, my wrist too much and, and overwork because uh, in the past I had a bunch of tendonitis and carpal tunnel issues so I'm, I'm trying to be very careful uh, with that and I'm taking breaks and stretching often as often as I can. Um, 99 Valence, is that the mic buggy? What's that sound or isn't it just me? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, if you hear any problem, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm not sure if it was just you. If anyone else heard something, then please let me know because uh, I will try to fix if there's something wrong. Uh, normal comic junkie, this page looks amazing, Sunny. You improved so much. Thank you. And thank you very much. I'm, I'm trying my best. <laughs> uh, 99 minutes, so it stopped. Uh, okay. Um, Natalia, but it just looks so sick. Thank you. Um, 99 Millions, have you ever tried drawing with the other hand? Uh, kinda? <laughs> I tried writing with my other hand. I mean, I'm gonna start thinking. I uh, just need to figure out which layer am I on. Okay, so I'm there. Um, because like I said, I, I used to deal with a lot of uh, wrist problems in the past. 
So there were times when I just had no choice but to write with my left hand. Um, it it didn't really work out. Like I, I'm really bad with my non-dominant hand. So you know I could take a few notes, but even in school it was a disaster. Um, I actually was wanting to try out this non-dominant hand drawing challenge, but. It just feels so cringy, even just to hold the pencil in my other hand, that it, it's just super weird. I, I might try it for a video in the future, uh, I'm not overly tempted because I already know that it will turn out horrible. Like, I, I've seen a bunch of artists doing it and, you know, for some artists, you barely can tell the difference. Like, sure, the lines are a little bit wobbly, but apart from that, there's, <laughs> there's not a huge difference. And for me, well, that will be interesting. <laughs> okay, I zoomed in a little bit too much and now I can't tell what's going on. Okay. The worst thing is when it comes to drawing detailed backgrounds like this digitally, when I'm zooming too much to get the details right, I kind of lose track of what I'm drawing. Like, for example, I zoomed into this area and I had no idea what's a tree anymore and what's a building and of course, it's, it's due to the lack of the data, because so far I only um, drew the silhouette of this tree. Uh, <laughs> and I just couldn't tell what, what, what's what, so... So yeah, um, you will see a lot of zooming in and zooming out while I'm working on this. Because this is the first time I'm drawing a huge background set like this, uh, digitally. And it certainly feels, feels very, very different than drawing and establishing shot or complex background traditionally. Because when you're working traditionally, you, you can see the wallpaper in front of you all of the times. But like this, uh, I, I can't, so it takes a lot of getting used to. Um, in the meantime, I will try to balance the comments and <laughs> the artwork. Also, I had the Instagram followers of Saigami or, or me. Um, so my Instagram followers, I I really can't think this today, uh, send in some questions that they would be interested uh, me answering in detail. So I'm going to answer a few of those. So while I'm answering those, I won't be looking at the comments, but I will focus on the artwork to make sure that I'm also making progress. And I'm just talking and talking and talking. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna catch up very quickly with your comments here and then I'm gonna start answering those questions. Um, I'm, my name is, I mean like practicing to be ambidextrous. Uh, yeah, that would be nice, but it probably won't happen with me because I'm, I'm very bad. Uh, like I said, I'm very bad with my non-dominant hand and not just that, I'm, I'm very, very bad with, uh, movement coordination. <laughs> so I, I actually had a lot of trouble with this in school even because my 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 hand, my leg and eye coordination just don't really match. Like there are some very basic stuff that I just can't do. And and I, I always had the trouble with this because there were a bunch of things that I, I just couldn't master or couldn't do. Like, you know, I, I, I suck at like for example clapping your hand and moving your head the same rhythm is something I can do. I know it's freaking ridiculous, uh, but but I just can't do that. The same goes with you know when you when you have to like with one hand you tap on your head and with your other hand you you just circle above your stomach. I can't do that. So so yeah, that's why I, I for example never could dance and things like that because I just can't move my my hands and legs and <laughs> my parts of my body at the same time. <laughs> so I I really suck with these kind of things. So, so yeah, I probably will never be able to, to master <laughs> my, my left hand, um, like that. So yeah, um, Sonic Ninja Warrior Fly, today is the day I get your name right, Mr. <laughs> Mrs. Sonny. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> um, my man is looking great. Thank you. Uh, Zemi9, I complete when I have to do a background for one panel, not even a full page. I honestly have to practice so much more before I even attempt this. Um, 
yeah well you know I, I used to fret backgrounds as well i there was a long long time where i didn't really enjoy working on them and then i started to take them seriously because i wanted my backgrounds to be part of my world building and ever since i've been enjoying them a lot especially backgrounds like this like uh you know open shots and environment i, I really love uh, and it's nature and, and ruins it's something that i just love and fun fact this whole thing was drawn without using any rulers or perspective tool so that's just making it super easy and super fun to work on this because you know it's 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 a, it's a it's a ruin city with a lot of greenery and nature and trees and water and rocks and stuff like that and those things don't really require a ruler or or a proper setup of uh, perspective of course things are still in perspective but i don't need to do the traditional you know setting up a vanishing point and making sure all of my lines are heading towards the vanishing points and stuff like that um because all i need here is just uh indicating the depth and it just works out the magic um Mini comics, I'm the same. I cannot do anything that requires coordination. Yay! <laughs> Team miscoordination, I guess. Or that's um, something else. Or that's misdirection. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> but it's always nice to know that I'm not alone. <laughs> um, Alrighty. Uh, so I'm gonna look at those Instagram questions. And... Let's see. I'm not gonna read um, the name for the questions because usually when I answer those Instagram questions, it doesn't show the name. So uh, I'm not sure if anyone wants their names revealed or not. So so I'm just gonna focus on the questions. So the first question is how to not lose focus on your comic and manga. And actually, that's I think a very common problem. Um, Especially when you're just starting out, and we've seen it so many times with uh, creators who wanted to join Saturday AM or even did manage uh, to start their publication or start a series, uh, that they are just losing focus. And admittedly, there are times when it happens to me that I I'm just losing focus. Uh, of course, uh, there are different levels um, to this because, you know, there are times when you're just losing focus because you just don't feel like drawing. You 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 just want to chill. You just want to hang out with your friends and and um, you just want to watch your favorite show. And and I think that's the most common. And I think that is something that you you need to counter with. Um... Oh, I'm having a brain fart right now. <laughs> Discipline. Discipline is the work I'm looking for. Um, because, you know, if, if you set a schedule and if you determine to meet your goals, meet your deadlines, um, then you know that you, you, you just need to focus on that. You just need to finish up the task, you need to work on that. And after that, you can watch your favorite show or you can go out with your friends or, or do whatever you want. And I think that's the easier part, especially if you can motivate yourself, then that can be something very, very easy to do. Um, of course, you can kind of turn it around. At first, you watch your favorite show, and then you will work. It never works out for me because once I sit down, I, I just get lost in whatever I'm watching. Like I'm, I'm a binge watcher, so it never, <laughs> never works for me. Like that's, that's the biggest lie. Like just one more episode, and then I'm gonna draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, the other aspect of losing focus is when you just fall out of the project that you're working on, and I think that's the trickier one because um, you, you're just not in the right mindset for a um, set story or, or a set artwork or, or heck, even if you're, you're working on something else, like something other creative uh, stuff, like you're a writer, you're, you're a musician or, or anything else, you name it. If you just lose the feeling or, or, or the passion and the kind of motivation to work on a certain project, and that can be tricky. Um, for me, it happens 
Um, I'm not saying it happens often, but um, since I have already other story ideas that I really, really want to work on in the future, it happens that there are just times when I just feel like, I, man, I'm, I really want to do those other projects. And, you know, all the ideas, all the mood I have in me is for that other project, for example. And um, it actually makes uh, it harder to, to just come back to Saigami and, and work on that because, you know, I'm just totally not focused on it. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very hard, in my opinion, to deal with that. And um, actually, uh, one thing that usually helps me with that is to actually just leave your original project for a tiny bit and focus a little bit on that new project or that new distraction that you have. And, um, you know, just, just, just give it out. Um, actually, this was something um, that Frederick, the CEO of Saturday, recommended me. When, when I came out with... Um, I already mentioned the story idea uh, a couple times before uh, during my live streams that I really, really want to do um, a sports manga after Saigami um, focusing on, on a female main cast uh, and also a female volleyball. And there was a time uh, when I just was like super focused on this other story. Uh, you know, I was driving the characters for it. I, I already started coming up. Like I, I already had the, the first chapter, the story arcs planned out, and and it was awesome because it was such a refreshing creative process. Coming up with everything, coming up with the new characters, coming up with everything, and and you know that exciting feeling when all of the puzzle pieces are fitting together and, and I'm making progress, and that was awesome. But at the same time, I had Saigami and I had to finish up, I think, yeah, I had to finish up volume 2. Like, it was during that time and I had volume 2 sitting there and I had to draw the cover and, and finish up everything for a deadline. And I was I was actually feeling hard um, because I just couldn't concentrate it because I was so much into this new project. And and yeah, you know, uh, Frederick and I, we, we've talked about it and even though, you know, he, he liked the idea, he was like, no, just 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 get it out from your system. Just just draw whatever you want for it. Just get it out, and then go back to Saigami and focus on that because that's your duty. So, so yeah, that that is actually that's been helping me ever since. Because yeah, there there are still many times when I'm just super into something, something that's not Saigami or something that's not uh, the actual art project that I'm I'm, I'm supposed to work on. So when it happens, now I know that I, I I just need to focus on that for a little bit. Be it you know just creating a sketch or or just jotting down some story ideas, anything that helps, literally. Like um, of course, you know it's also fun content because I've been sharing some parts of uh, the story and some character designs and and sketches uh, with my Patreon followers. Uh, from this story, so you know, it's still something that that I have building up. So it's not wasted effort, um, but at the same time, yeah, I, I can't afford to just lose focus like that. So this is a technique that helps me. But beyond that, all you need to do is just have that sense of duty. That yeah, you 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 need to find your focus again. So so yeah, determination and. And discipline. It can also help uh, going back to your roots or when you just can't find the focus, uh, just focus on some of the exciting part of your project um, because that can help you find that motivation and that passion and excitement again. Uh, for example, for this installment, I started to draw the pages in a very different order uh, than how they are supposed to run in the series. Because first I wanted to draw the part that was easy and uh, it was a part that I actually did enjoy a lot for uh, the story. Because, you know, it's kind of hard to go back and draw a page that's totally boring or has parts that you don't really feel like drawing, but, but you need to. So, actually that's something I always do, that when I sit down drawing pages, I always start with something that's easy and fun. Or if it's a scene that I'm enjoying, it's uh, characters that I, I like to draw more than others and, and stuff like that. So, so, so help 
get your motivation and focus back by starting out with something that can help you build up that focus and excitement. Okay, how to saving? Oh, so just a few words for this artwork, as you can see. Uh, I don't really have a proper sketch for this, so I'm pretty much improvising all of the details here. And that is actually something that just makes it even more fun for me. Because, yeah, I, I have these few lines scribbled here and there, indicating that, yeah, that's supposed to be a building or there's supposed to be a tree. But apart from that, all of the details I'm making up are made up as I go. Um, even with my storyboard, I only had a few scribble lines, just indicating that, yep, there will be a background here. <laughs> and, and yeah, um, everything else, um, I'm just making up. Of course, I, um, I looked up a bunch of reference pictures uh, for inspiration. Like, you know, I just googled uh, fantasy ruins and stuff like that. So I've been looking at a bunch of images to see this sort of environment where, you know, moss and trees and everything is overgrown, ancient ruins and castles and stuff like that. Um, so I've been studying those images a little bit. And apart from that, I'm also adding a lot of personal uh, experience um, because my hometown, uh, the city of Page in Hungary has actually a bunch of ruins. Um, like it's it's really cool because the downtown of my city uh, still has the ancient uh, town wall, like the castle wall uh, that surrounded the city thousand years ago. So every day when I was going to work, I was walking by this thousand-year-old stone wall, and and you can see um, the, these ruins all the time. So. So that was a part of my inspiration, uh, and I, I, I really enjoy drawing uh, scenarios like that. Because, yeah, it's part of my roots, I guess. <laughs> okay, let's see the comments. Um... Kamiya Falabi, amazing. Backgrounds are so hard, especially digitally, at least for me. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, there are some aspects that I really enjoy with digital, that you know, I can work with layers and, of course, I can make easy corrections and things like that. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it's hard. Right now, I'm just like super focused on this part. And yeah, I'm not seeing the whole picture while, while I'm working on this. So I, I have to zoom in, zoom out. And make sure everything is working out fine, especially with um, the line width as well. Because yeah, when I'm going in with these smaller details, I tend to go for a, a thinner brush size. But you know, I can't make it too thin because then the line will just disappear the moment I zoom out. And I even used um, like you can see that these lines are way thicker. For this, I actually used one of the tools um, that Clip Studio has, where you can um, adjust the line width. Of course, it is supposed to work with uh, vector layers. It still works with uh, raster layers as well, but uh, not so efficiently, so it it doesn't look as nice and clean. But you know, once you zoom out and once the book will be printed, you probably won't be able to tell the difference. So yeah, let's go back here. But yeah, coming back for uh, the personal, like this part, what I'm drawing is also um, it's something that I'm pulling from my memory, from my hometown, because we, we have gates. Like, if you go up in the mountain, there's a stone gate like this. Um, that I, I visited a couple, couple of times. Uh, even, even last year when I was in Hungary. Um, of course, you know, I'm, I'm not opening up pictures of it or anything, so it's not... 100% agree, like I'm literally just pulling this from my memory, but it's still super fun to have that image in my mind and trying to build it in Saigami. Um, mini comics, sometimes you lose focus because you work too much and you just need a break. Yep, there's that too. I, I, I think. Uh, losing focus and overworking can also come um, uh, with um, with art block. Like it's basically the same. Like art, 
losing focus is part of an art block or art block is part of art losing focus so so yeah there, there's that like like yeah sometimes when, when you just lose focus just just yeah take a break and just do whatever distracts you <laughs> because it can help definitely Um, Mr. Jer, dude, I believe characters' bedroom can easily tell so much about the characters themselves. Examples: Perfect Blue and most, uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah, for a moment I was like, MJ, what's that? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, well, that's basically part of their environment and and you know uh, that's an aspect of background drawing that I think is super fun because yeah by, by showing the room of the characters you can clearly indicate who they are as a person like, it, it can be very telling how the bedrooms look like and you know they're just their bedrooms like their, their whole environment like that it can be very very telling Yeah, although you couldn't really see much of Ayumi's bedroom in the first chapter of Saigami, I tried to incorporate some small details that could be showing a little bit of her character. Um, y you know, those are details that probably no one really noticed or paid attention to, but you know, um, I included like a schedule on her wall showing that, you know, yeah, she is a person who's who has a schedule, who, who is... Uh, you know, um, trying to take care of a lot of things effectively. I also did draw like one of those dream catchers over her bed um, because I think that's that's a small touch uh, that shows that she's a person who a probably has a, a bunch of nightmares, and you know that's how the story starts basically. And b someone who believes a little bit in these kind of supernatural things. And you know that that gives you a little glimpse that yeah she she believes in that so she probably will have an easier time believing encountering supernatural and things like that like you know because I, I'm not saying that you know uh, dream catchers are, are supernatural but but you know they 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 come from uh, not saying mythology but you know um, folk belief and. And things like that, so so I, I try to include that. Okay. Mm yeah, you feel like I'm behind the comments, but at least I'm making progress. <laughs> um Sonic Ninja. I remember when I was working on an action scene. For one story, I ended up thinking about romantic scene for another and vice versa. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and yeah, that, that can be very distracting when you're supposed to draw like the most epic fight scene of your series and all you can think of is just, oh, I want to draw fluff. <laughs> so, so yeah, it, it can be very tricky. Especially if, you know, um, when you're, you're not just drawing, but you're in the storyboarding phase. And yeah, I've been having a lot of trouble with that, that, you know, I was supposed to draw like an intense or dramatic scene, but I just couldn't get into the mood because all I was thinking about was something else, like a fun scene or, or yeah, romantic scene or, or just, just, just something completely different. And, you know, maybe it, it didn't even have anything to do with Saigami or I was just in the mood or, you know, I was so much into a different series. Uh, not just a series that I was creating, but you know, I was I was super into a series I was following. I was into whatever you know, uh, what will happen next, what will happen to my favorite ship, or or whatever. And it's just super hard to focus. So, <laughs> and times like this, I, I tend to just sketch it out, like like do a sketch, and and yeah, <laughs> find my focus again. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, let's see, Stormy, what's up, Sunny? Um, nice to have you here again. <laughs> um, I'm having a blast. I, I am actually super excited to do the stream. I, I really missed doing streams and, and doing art, actually. Like, yeah, this is the first time um, in the last two weeks, more than two weeks. It's almost, yeah, it's, heck, it's almost three weeks that I'm back in Hungary now. And, and yeah, although I've been working on art and then stuff, this is the first time that I can just sit down and just actually really enjoy it and not just trying to binge draw. So, so right now I'm just feeling so much at peace. <laughs> That would be really nice. Um, Naftali Albert. Oh, Sunny, will you do traditional art videos again? Um, probably not anytime soon because uh, I'm back in Hungary and I don't have any anything to do traditional art with here. I mean, I, I still have uh, my old art stuff, like I have a set of colored pencils and uh, some, some watercolor and you know, stuff that I used to have and use for art. Uh, but for example, I don't have uh, my camera, I don't have my, uh, my tripod to put the camera on, so I don't have the equipment to create traditional videos, because it's just, it's just overwhelming to travel. To a different continent carrying all this stuff so I, I left everything in Canada hoping that I can go back as soon as possible and, um, and yeah in the meantime I, I'm just using uh, my XP pen to do art and you know luckily like this I can do streams with just my laptop and my tablet so it's easier on me and I don't have to carry around too many stuff of course, I, I kind of miss traditional art, and there, there are still things that I wish to do with traditional art. Like, I, I will do uh, some marker artwork for sure. Um, with markers. Um, but I, I will talk about that later. <laughs> because, yeah, I'm not sure if I can reveal details about that just yet or not, so yeah. <laughs> But there surely will be traditional videos, like, I still don't know how I will do the marker videos, but yeah, there will be a traditional marker video for sure. Probably before I go back to Canada, so that will be interesting. But yeah, in the meantime, um, all of my streams will be uh, digital. I probably will have a stream, or at least a video login next weekend, because I will be going to a convention in Hungary. And if you've been around last year, I did the same thing, but I was walking around the convention, I won't do that again because everyone got CC because you know I was just using uh, a selfie stick and holding up my camera and it was just oh my god it, it was the worst recording ever <laughs> so I, I won't do anything like that but I, I still would like to do some something fun at that convention that could be interesting to you guys as well so yeah we shall see um Let's see. Cat You can take out a girl from Hungary, but you can take out Hungary from the girl. Okay. <laughs> that took me too long to just process what I read. <laughs> yep, exactly. Like, you know, I, I might have left Hungary. Of course, now I'm back in Hungary, so <laughs> there goes the novelty of that. But, but yeah. Um, very soon I will be completely and finally for good move to Canada <laughs> and will only come back for like short visits um, once my immigration process is over um, but yeah you know Hungary will still be a part of who I am and I, I will always cherish my roots and you probably will be able to see a lot of Hungarian connection in my artwork and what I do and and, and yeah, actually, uh, for the next series uh, that I want to work on, that volleyball story, it still doesn't have a title, so I'm just gonna refer to it as the volleyball story. Uh, the main character, she's Hungarian. A Hungarian girl who's moving to the US. So, yeah. <laughs> that will be 
also very close to home. But yeah, uh, with that story, I, I want to cherish my roots even more when it comes to the main character. And that was a saving. <laughs> Uh, so Kita Oshiwade, probably butchering your name, sorry. Kita is here, hello everybody. Oh, hello! <laughs> and here we have Grimheim as well, hello! Nice to see you here. And oh, I see backgrounds, yep. Working on this... This. <laughs> this super fun. Super, super time consuming piece. <laughs> And once again, improvising a little bit here. Is this supposed to be already in the water or not? Uh, not, okay. So yeah, part of this problem is zooming out and not having a proper sketch. Uh, so you probably, well, I'm not sure how much you can tell it because it's not finished yet, but in this area I have like a, a swamp or just water and things are is growing out or emerging from water and the swamp, but I wasn't sure where is the border for that, so I'm supposed to draw a ground here, or is it supposed to be still in the water, but the water is probably around here-ish, so yeah. That's why I need to zoom in and zoom out a bunch of times. Or, of course, I could have done like a proper sketch, but yeah, where's the fun in that? <laughs> I never do proper sketch for my backgrounds. Okay, only when I'm, I'm I'm drawing with like the perspective tool, or when I was drawing uh, like buildings with proper perspective and things like that. Then, then yeah, for that I, I need all, all the guidance that I can use. But but for more natural shots, I I just prefer to go on a whim, especially when it's you know the first shot because. In the upcoming pages where this will actually be the background, I already will have to use this as a reference, so I, I won't be able to improvise as much, because then I will have to look at the details that, oh yeah, this is how I drew this background, and yeah, then I will have to stick to that. So, so yeah, <laughs> there's that, but that will be a problem for another page. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, comments, comments. I will try to catch up very quick uh, with the comments and then I will answer another question because I have quite a few um, on my Instagram. So let's see. Uh, Lawrence Alimat, how much time does it take you to finish a manga page? It depends on the page. Like this double page is right now probably getting closer to like a 15 hour mark, if not more. Um, so yeah, but you know, this is also a double page, so it's like two pages. But usually a page is between four and eight hours, depending on the content. Like some pages I can just finish up quick and easily within like four hours. Uh, some pages will take more, but uh, I would say that usually it's like six hours per page. That's, that's a good average. I mean, it's a slow average, I, I wish I was faster. I know artists who are way faster than that. But for me, that's that's how it is. Uh, Sokita, do you guys have assistants at Saturday AM? Um, not really. Um, we, we don't have like official assistants, like in employed assistants or stuff like that. Um, some of our creators, including me, had, had some help with pages. For example, I had uh, a few interns working with me. Uh, some of them are still working on their uh, Summer of Manga Entry under, uh, no, under my guidance. I really can't talk today. And some of them you already seen debut in issue 105 and 106, uh, respectively Ricky Duran and Zaif, uh, who did uh, Atlas Article and Midcasters, which both of them were super awesome and I'm super proud of these guys. And yeah, while they were working uh, on their content in the internship program, they were also helping me with some of my pages, like they were doing some of the effects and backgrounds and screen tonings. 
So, so both of these guys and my other interns, uh, Ray, Emma, and JR, were been huge help. Have been huge help for me um, with their help. And but you know, this is uh, mostly for the internship, so it's it's not like I have assistants working with me. Um, I know that uh, Raymond. Uh, who's doing Blue Eater, by the way, Blue Eater is back in 107 and it's on the cover, so check it out because it's awesome, I, I love Blue Eater. Um, he's, he's having, uh, I'm, I'm not saying he's an assistant, but he has a helper who helps him ink uh, stuff and things like that. Um, apart from that, I'm not sure um, if or our other artists have people who can have them with screen tones and stuff like that. I also had uh, my best friend help me with screen tones in the past. Uh, if you read the first volume of Saigami, you, you you already know about this part because because yeah, she's she's been a huge help for me. Uh, screen toning my pages or you know just scanning in my pages or just erasing my, my sketches and stuff like that whenever I was uh, falling behind my deadlines and things like that. So yeah, every now and then I have people helping me with the pages, but I never had like full-on assistants who were, who were there to, to just help me uh, with the pages. It would be really nice to have assistants, <laughs> of course, uh, but that is probably something for the future because at the moment, you know, uh, I, I just can't afford to pay someone for their help with the pages or anything. Um, so it was, you know, one thing with the internship because it was just part of their training to actually use some of the stuff that they learned during the internship in actual pages and also, you know, help me out so I can focus on teaching them and things like that. Um, so yeah. Um, Mr. Jure dude, uh, Sunny, have you heard of the fire at Kiwani? Yep, I have and it's, it's just crazy and devastating, like, uh, when, when I first read the news, uh, you know, uh, they, they just said that it's on fire, but uh, they didn't mention any of the casualties, and then I've just seen the numbers going up and up and up, and, and it's just, it, it's even hard to talk about it, because, yeah, it's, it's just crazy that, it, it's a studio that I, I like a lot, and, you know, there, there are many of uh, my favorites that are from Kiwani, and and yeah, they they are one of the few uh, studios that are actually having a, a good reputation. Like you know, they they don't have the crazy crunch time, or at least not as much as the other studios. And you, you know, you you hear a, a lot of bad things about Japanese animation studios, and not just Japanese animation studios. The animation industry, as it is, is is very tough with a lot of crunch time and, and very underpaid creators. And and, and yeah, Kiwani um, was one of the best on that term and they, they 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 had so many talented people and 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 yeah it's just crazy to think that many of those people are gone now. And you know, it's it's just super sad. And yeah, think things like this shouldn't happen but we live in a messed up world. So I, I, I yeah. I, I'm not even sure what to say, what to do. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that the studio will be able to stand up uh, from this. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a tra tragedy as it is. So yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's even kind of hard to talk. Or the comments. Uh, Darkstorm, uh, I need to draw more so I can keep improving. Yep, drawing more and drawing more often and drawing the smart way is the best way to improve. Um, Krimheim, this looks amazing. Thank you. Uh, Darkstorm, also how long have you planning to stream today? I literally did not plan this. I mean, I was hoping to do a stream this weekend, 
I, I actually did mention that I might stream this weekend on my Patreon to my Patreon followers. Uh, but it was literally like just this morning when I finally got more than six hours of sleep and I, I got up and I was like, yeah, today can be the day <laughs> that I, I actually will do that stream. And now here we are. So yeah, usually I, I like to announce my streams more in advance. Um, but yeah, my, my last three weeks have been all over the place and I was never sure. Uh, when I will be able to do this or <laughs> when I will be in the position to actually do art when I will be staying here where I have my equipment like I've been I've been couch surfing quite hard <laughs> in the last few days sleeping here sleeping there at friends at families workplace and stuff like that so so yeah <laughs> it's not easy to schedule things Uh, Mr. Churchill, will Saturday I'm ever get a Discord? Um, possibly. We we actually do have a Discord. We just don't have the stuff uh, to operate it. Like, you know, with Discord you, you need an admin, you need someone who takes care of that. And uh, yeah, we are, we are missing quite a few hands uh, to take care of everything. Like, it's just impossible for us to take care of every single platform of social media. Um, but, you know, if, if you want... Um, a very focused Saturday M community, I recommend uh, to check out our Amino community, which is, you know, I, I would say it's kind of similar to Discord, of course it's not the same, but you know, it's, it, it has a chat feature, you can post everything, people are posting, we, we have some fun stuff like polls and, and quizzes and stuff like that, we, we also do some Amino exclusive um, streams and chats and stuff like that so i can definitely recommend it we, we have some fun stuff going on there and yeah hopefully in the future we can we can have a discord as well it's just you know we are a small company with not too many fans so too much fans i think oh well i, I really can't finish today um but yeah hopefully in the future we, we will be able to take care um, other social media platforms as well. Uh, Manga Striker, good evening, night from Slovakia. Oh, hey there, neighbor. <laughs> um, okay, so I think I'm, yeah, I think I have reached the comments, so now. I'm going to move on with the questions. Uh, so question, do you work on the weekends as well or do you use time to take a break? Um, it depends. Uh, you know, when I have deadlines then I, I tend to work on the weekends as well or at least, you know, do some streams because usually I found that the streams tend to do better on the weekends and everyone else is free as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, usually, or at least when I'm in Canada, I I prefer to work during the weekdays and have the weekends free because, you know, um, my husband Peter, he works uh, during the week, so it's easier for me to focus on work as well, like he's also at his workplace. And yeah, on the weekends, you know, we, we, we have some other stuff to do, like going on walks, hanging out with friends, doing chores, laundry and stuff like that. So so yeah, um, the weekends are more for everything else and I, I try to focus art, focus on art during the week. Like, you know, uh, whenever you're, you're a freelancer, it's, it's easier to build up a schedule, like as if you were working in an actual workplace. So that works as well. Of course now things are a little bit trickier since I'm back in Hungary and since I will be here for, for a little while I I actually picked up I would like to say it's a part-time but I'm working way more than a part-time should have so <laughs> so yeah so I'm back to my old workplace for this few months so that makes things a bit harder, because there are days when I work during the weekend, 
So, so yeah. There's that. Or when I'm working during the weekdays, and I only have time to work on art on the weekends. So, yeah. I, I just try to be flexible. Um, let's see, next question. Are you heading to Comic Con in October? I probably won't. I, I really hope to go to more conventions. Um, but right now I don't have any schedule or any plans in the making uh, for attending convention. Of course, there might be some things happening with Saturday AM that might bring our creators or at least some of our creators to conventions. Um, but nothing is set in stone yet, so I, I really don't know. What I know for sure is that next week I will be at Summer MondaCon in Hungary, Budapest. Uh, but that's literally the only con I have scheduled at the moment. Of course, you know, if, if I have the chance, then sure I would love to go to conventions, because I so freaking love conventions and going to conventions, and, and I've been enjoying the, the American conventions a lot. Like, they are just so much better and bigger than anything we have in Hungary. But I, I really hope to go uh, to some more conventions. It's Saturday I'm or you know, if, if nothing else, as a visitor, it will be fun as well. So, you know, once I'm back in Canada, the hope is that I will be able to attend some Canadian conventions and maybe some more conventions in the US. I'm not sure there are, there are some huge conventions that I really would like to attend. Um, like, yeah, yeah, like, you know, just, just like, conventions like San Diego Comic Con, New York Comic Con, or RTX, Austin, and stuff like that, would be really nice. <laughs> that, that's for the future. First, I need to work hard and get back to Canada. <laughs> um, another question. Um, are you ready to give us the storyboard templates? I know, I will. I, I, I promise this so many times. I just never found the time to properly upload them. And, and yeah, I always wanted to upload them while doing also a video tutorial on storyboarding. And I have all of the, the assets for that. So I literally just need to sit down and do that video. And then I can share the template as part of the video with you guys. It's just been quite a ride. Uh, ever since I mentioned those templates. Uh, but I can promise that it will happen and I ask for a little bit more patience. Because I, I really would like to release them together. And and yeah, right now I have these pages and many other tasks at Saturday to focus on. And yeah, then I have the convention happening as well. Uh, but after the convention is over, I hope to upload those videos that I have like half done. Like I have at least three or four videos that are halfway done. I really just need to sit down and finish recording the voiceover for them and uh, finish editing them. So, so yeah, I have quite a few things to look forward to. So all I'm asking is just a little bit more patience. Okay, so i game because I have no idea what I plan to draw here. Also looking at the comments. And I also should be saving. <laughs> I haven't saved ever since starting this stream. So yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, where was I? Ah, Solomon Budu, love your art style, thank you! Uh, Manga Striker, where are the narwhal plushies? Actually, I have some good news with the narwhal plushies <laughs> because at the convention where I'm going, we will have narwhal plushies. <laughs> so, people who will visit the Saigami booth will find narwhal plushies there. Because one of my best friends, she's awesome, she's making um, like crochet animals and uh, a bunch of plushies, like starting from Pokemon plushies to all sorts of plushies, and she's making narwhals as well. So I already told her that I need narwhals. <laughs> so she, she already made uh, a few narwhals for me, so I surely will have a video with narwhals included. <laughs> Uh, probably will make that video next weekend when I'm at the convention. So the narwhals are coming. <laughs> so yeah, 
We are, we are taking this to the next level, I promise. <laughs> um, let's see. Naftali Arborson, you can call me Tally because my name is so hard to pronounce. Well, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's easier. <laughs> because, yeah, I'm, I'm probably butchering a bunch of names here, so... So, yeah, nick nicknames are... are fun and making lives easy. Unless it's a nickname that no one can spell, or even you can spell it. <laughs> like, there was this one case where we were hanging out with friends at the fundraiser in Canada, and I just couldn't spell my own name. <laughs> and I was the laughing mother for that night. <laughs> and yeah, we were in a picture, and yeah, they, they didn't spell my name right. <laughs> Who am I to judge if I'm the one who spelled it the wrong way to begin with? So yeah. <laughs> uh, Mega Striker, also with Sagami since you're hungry and a lot. Have you been to Haida Soboslo? Uh, I've been there like four times and it was wonderful, especially the water park. Uh, nope. <laughs> Actually, no. Um, I heard a lot of things about um, the water park in Haidu Suboslo and I hope to visit it one day but I live in the other corner of the country uh, very far away uh, from Haidu Suboslo so I never got a chance to, to go to that uh, part of the country so, so yeah, in the future I would like to do more trips in Hungary to visit the parts where I've never been to because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's such a small country and yeah, there are so many parts of it where I, I never been, so so definitely would love to go to more places and, and yeah, probably check out that water park as well. I never been to a water park <laughs> actually. So so yeah, that that would be something on my bucket list for sure. I'm not too crazy for water, uh, like, I, I, I can't really swim, I panic in water, but you know, water parks seem like fun, so... so yeah, in the, in the future, maybe, <laughs> hopefully. Um, let's see, uh, Cat Boha. Of course, I didn't plan to go to Con this summer. I'm cursed. Ah, uh, that's sad. <laughs> but yeah, you know. There are many times when I wish to go to Con as well, but I'm, I just can't, so I, I feel for you. <laughs> um. <clears throat> So, Kita, the studio in Kion is that the same studio uh, doing Fire Force? Uh, no, uh, Fire Force is done by Studio David, uh, as far as I know. Uh, they even made an announcement that uh, they are not streaming the upcoming episodes of Fire Force uh, because of the recent events at Kion, because, yeah, it's. Um, I'm not saying it's inappropriate, but it's it's a tragedy for the whole country. So you probably don't want to see something like that on TV right now. So I absolutely understand um, why 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 are they putting the show on hold? Uh, Rashad, I uh, just wanted to say I really look, uh, I really took drawing background series right after watching. One of your videos a few years back, been following you ever since. Oh, thank you! And and yeah, I'm happy if one of my videos could help you. <laughs> I, uh, I remember, yeah, I, I had that background drawing video. <laughs> and that actually had quite a feedback from people and, and I'm, I'm always happy to hear that uh, one of my videos or maybe a few of my videos can help artists. And you know, even though it was not like a proper tutorial, tutorial like showing you how to draw this and that uh, it was more just focusing on the mindset that you need to 
get into this mindset in order to draw backgrounds. And I still say the same thing, like, you know, this looks like a super difficult, super complex background. But as you can see, all I'm doing is just drawing lines and lines and lines and just improvising, trying to indicate details and stuff like that. And it just works and it looks pretty cool. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually super pleased how this is turning out. So I'm not here to praise myself, but you know, it's kind of healthy if you're an artist to, to every now and then just, just look at your stuff and say like, shit, that looks good, I like it. <laughs> because you know, a few days later you will be like, oh no, I hate this. Because artists are more often than not not too happy or not proud of what they're doing. So it's nice to every now and then have that feeling that, yeah, this is cool. Zami <laughs> um, 9, this is it. I can no longer hold back the Narvel army. <laughs> I put up a good fight. It was an honor serving you all. But for now, long live Narvels. <laughs> Yep, they are taking over the channel. <laughs> like, I'm not sure how many Narvels we will have next weekend, but I'm really looking forward to that Narvel army. <laughs> and you know, since she's also making plushies and all sorts of... Maybe there will be like a Chibigon plushie in the works as well. Maybe? Maybe? I really hope I've been waiting for that for years now. <laughs> so, it's not like I'm teasing you guys. I have been teased for like three years now that there will be a Chibigon plushie but there is never a Chibigon plushie so maybe this will be the year <laughs> we're waiting for but we, we shall see but Narwhals surely surely we will have the Narwhals <laughs> um Manga Striker uh how about Budapest Zoo or Tropicarium um, according to that one big mall. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I actually been to uh, the Budapest Zoo last year with my mom, and that was super fun. Uh, I, I love zoos. I, I love animals, and, and of course, you know, I know that zoos are not the best because it's best to see animals in the wild and things like that. But at the same time, you know, I I think the Budapest Zoo is actually a really nice one. Um, at least for my Hungarian standards, I've never been to a zoo abroad, so <laughs> I can't really compare them. Um, but yeah, I, I love the Budapest Zoo. It was it was super fun. I enjoyed it. Um, and yes, for uh, the Tropicarium, I have been there once when I was in fourth or fifth grade in elementary school. So that's been quite a while now. Um, I don't remember much of it. I remember that they had like a, a tunnel going under one of their uh, aquariums and you could see a small shark and all of my classmates, me included, thought that that was kind of like plaster because we were like expecting like a jaws size of shark <laughs> and all they had was this small sharky. Um, um, yeah, so... Maybe I can go to the Tropicarium once again. Uh, I'm sure they made some improvements ever since. Because, yeah, when, when I was there, it was, I think, the year it opened even. So, it, I'm sure it improved a lot ever since. Oh, hey there, puppy. <laughs> so, yeah, right now I'm surrounded by both of the doggies. And now I wish I had the camera because then I could show them to you guys. They are cute. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna pick one more question. I mean, I, I have a few more, so. Uh, another question. What does Saigami mean? Um, Saigami is a made up word. Uh, but it has a meaning in the story, and um, yeah, it is explained in chapter 4, so you can't read that for free, but you can read it if you get the first volume. But basically, Saigami, the word in Saigami, is uh, a phrase or a word that means new or different gods in an ancient language. Um, from the story. Uh, in chapter 4, uh, 
the wall historic aspect or the wall legend is revealed of uh, what are Saigamis, how they came to be, what happened and how it all started. Um, so if you're interested you can read more about that. Um, but as it is, Saigami is just um, a made up word. It does sound Japanese, but I did not use um, Japanese to make it up. <laughs> of course, uh, partially I was, because I knew that uh, Kami is gods, and you know, in, in some words, uh, the, the, the K in Kami turns into a G, so it, it can become a Gami. So that part, yeah, I kind of took from Japanese. Um, but you know, for the rest, I, I was just going for a word that sounded cool and uh, uh, but at the same time had no meaning necessarily. Of course, later on I I found out that uh, there is actually like a Saigami Bay in Japan. So there is probably a meaning. <laughs> uh, of course, you know, it can be written in a different way or with different kanjis and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I was just going for a word that sounded cool and sounded kind of unique. Um, and yeah, I, I, I only gave it a meaning inside the story. <clears throat> um, let's see, Mangus Riker. What? No Fire Force on Anime Monday? It's a small tradition that I do. I watch anime only on Monday to make it more enjoyable. Well, yeah, no Fire Force. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm, I'm not even sure which episode they are on. Um, but yeah, they will make announcements on that. that when will they start streaming it again? But yeah, it's it's kind of common that they. They are skipping a few episodes. Like it happened a couple times before, whenever Japan had uh, something going on. Of course, uh, it was usually just like uh, natural troubles, like a typhoon or earthquake and things like that. Uh, but you know, whenever something happens, they are putting some shows on hold or just delaying the magazine releases and stuff like that. So I'm sure they will make an announcement on that and they will go back to the original schedule. Uh, Savage Beer Arts. I've been studying backgrounds this whole week. I noticed I'm a bit better at more natural things like trees, mountains, cities are nightmares. I need to show you this character I made later. Alright, yeah, well, you know where to find me. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I tend to be the same. Like for some people, you know, they enjoy drawing like cities and buildings. Uh, I tend to be more in favor of drawing natural stuff, like drawing rocks, trees, scenarios like this. It's just easier for me, especially when yeah, I can just improvise and just. I don't... What are you doing, puppy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, one of the puppies just jumped on one of the seats where we had a backpack. So now she's inside the backpack. I swear, this dog is half cat. <laughs> Mr. Church, dude, cities are like a bunch of boxes. Yeah, kinda. I mean, it depends on what kind of architecture. Uh, ar architecture. Yeah, I can never pronounce this word the right way. <laughs> uh, you're going for because yeah, if you're going for a big city like New York, New York or or city with skyscrapers and stuff like that, then then yeah, everything will be sort of like square shaped and kind of like boxes. But if you're going for something else, like for example, if I think about like Hungarian um, cities or, or many cities in Europe, 
the architecture will look different, so you can't really go for that boxy look. Uh, but of course, you know, it will, it will come down to um, details at the same time, so auto saving. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Sokita, the hardest thing to draw for me is cars. Yeah, cars are tricky. I. I I I I don't think I I drew cars. Well, surely not in Saigami. Uh, but yeah, you know the easiest thing is to just use reference images, and then that will make things way 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 easier. So so yeah, and you know, just keep in mind that you don't need to draw everything from memory. Like there there's just no way that you can draw everything from memory, and. What matters in the end is drawing the details accurately, or just indicating certain elements of a, of a vehicle, or, a, or an object, or a building, or an environment. And for that, you need to use references, and it will make your life's life so much easier. Mm -hmm. Manga Striker, Duru was like, give me fire. And now that happened. No. Oh. Um, yeah, I, I'm not watching Dororo. I, I really wanted to watch it, but um, I think it's it's like on an Amazon Prime or I, yeah, I think it's an Amazon. It, it is on a platform that I don't have a subscription for, so no Dororo for me. Which is sad because I, I heard it's quite awesome and I really wanted to watch it, but can't have all of the subscription. So, so yeah, <laughs> but I, I hope to watch it in the future. Uh, Grimheim, how happy are you so far with this year summer of manga? I'm super happy with it. Like, <laughs> I know I might be biased because my kids are in it, <laughs> and and yeah, I kind of feel like a proud mom that the people that I've been working with for the past heck almost for the past half year because we started internship applications in January and I started working together with these amazing creators in February so so yeah uh, they are in it but apart from that the other entries that we received this year are, are really good like Summer of Manga is, is something I think that keeps getting better and better every year like last year I said that yeah this is so far the best summer of manga and the year before that I was like oh yeah this is way better than the year before um, but yeah I, I'm, I'm super happy with this year's um, summer of manga and and yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to to see the rest of it like we have issue 107 just came out so we have two more issues for summer of manga 108 and 109 and the the rest of my interns are supposed to be in these issues. They are working their hardest on those pages and I'm rooting for them super hard so they can finish it because the deadlines are, are tough and, and yeah, they, they've been working on it for a long time now. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy and, and I hope that you guys are checking out some of manga as well. And of course, uh, don't forget that you can and you're asked to vote uh, for these entries and give feedback because uh, your feedback matters to us and um, good feedback can mean a serialization for these guys running in Summer of Manga so, so your opinion, your feedback is, is a very very valuable information for us so if you're a subscriber you can already vote for issue 107 and, and the rest of the issues and if you're only checking out the free issues you can still give us your vote like you can go to the free issue at our homepage you can find the link in my profile and you can give us your feedback on the issue on the summer of manga entry on your favorite series because it all does matter so please <laughs> take the time and, and do the voting for us Drink. I have this horrible drink for me. I, I got it from my mom. It was supposed to be something special tasting. Um, it has mango and rhubarb flavor, but it just tastes like 
drinking raisins and it's just horrible because I hate raisins <laughs> and, and yeah you know I'm not wasting a drink so <laughs> it's just ugh, burst pop of my life So, Rashad, how did you go about getting the music made for Saigami? Um, the music for Saigami is made by the awesome German musician uh, Matthias Ter, also called as Madness. Um, you can find all of his links in my profile and you can listen to all the Saigami songs. So, what happened is when I started, well, it was not when I started, but when I restarted Saigami as a project, I I wanted to do like uh, trailers and character profile videos, highly, highly inspired by the Rwanda project. If you've been around for long enough to know who they are or, or ever seen their videos, you know that they had this pretty cool um, character description videos, and I really loved the idea of those. And I wanted to do the same thing for Segami, so I, I wanted to have some unique music, um, not just for my videos, but for the trailers, like the manga trailer and uh, for the character videos as well. Of course, I suck in music, so there was no way that I can make my own music. I gave it a try, honestly, but yeah. So. I was just looking for, for music uh, on YouTube that maybe, you know, I can find like a musician who would be interested in collaborating and I found Matthias's version of To Zenarkand and I really loved it. It's still one of my, my favorite uh, cover music, not cover music, because he, he, he did his own, own uh, like folk remix of that song. Tizen Arkand is one of my favorite songs to begin with, like Final Fantasy X is my all-time favorite video game and, and that song is just perfection itself. And I really loved um, that version of the song Matthias made and I listened to the rest of his music and I was like, holy crap, I love this guy's music. Um, so I messaged him if uh, he would be okay if I were to use uh, some of his music. Uh, with my videos, of, of course, crediting him and, and everything, and he was kind enough to let me use his music, and then the conversation went on, and he offered that he can make some some new music for me. So the conversation started, and he actually did enjoy Saigami a lot. Like um, he, he he still supports the series, and he has the volumes, and he enjoys the story, and he is just super excited for Saigami, and and. He's just an amazing and super kind guy, and and yeah, I, I sent him a bunch of information of uh, what uh, what to know about the characters. He received a bunch of spoilers, so I, I'm still feel sad that oh my god, I spoiled so many things for him about the story and about the characters. But at the same time, I wanted him to have the wall picture for the characters, so he can really get into the mindset of the characters uh, to capture their songs. And I also showed him examples of how I imagine um, uh, the songs uh, that would be fitting for the characters. Like, I, I, I sent at least two songs for every character that I, I, I would like to have something that either sounds similar is is having the, the, the same kind of build-up or instruments or the same kind of mood uh, for the characters or I thought that fitting for the characters because I already had my playlist of songs that I like and, and that I, I, I was always using for Saigami that yeah this song reminds me of Ayumi, this song reminds me of Sean, of Reiji, of other characters so I was already collecting those songs so I sent those songs to him and then he just did his magic and all the Saigami songs just turned out way more amazing than I ever expected them to be like Matthias just kept surprising me every single time and he, he just did such an incredible job that oh my goodness like I still listen every single time I'm doing storyboards I'm doing uh, story planning writing 
All I listen to is his songs because it's just so spot on for Saigon and it's just beautiful what he did with these songs and, and capture the characters and the atmosphere and everything so beautifully. So right now what you can hear is uh I'm not sure how much you can hear, but yeah, it's uh, it's actually I miss team. But if you want to listen to the proper Saigami soundtrack without me talking over it, then please go to Matthias's channel. He has the whole album up, and he also has the song separated. We we have uh, character themes for all of the main characters, also a Saigami theme song, and um, and yeah, you you can listen to it. Um, for free on YouTube, I it's also up I think on Spotify, and yeah, if you want to support Matthias with a little bit, then you can get the song also on Bandcamp or Amazon Music and Google Music, um, because yeah, he, he deserves all the love because he's just incredible and and yeah, I I, I absolutely love the Saigami songs. And the puppies are at it again, <laughs> so I'm sorry if you can hear dogs barking. There's probably someone walking on the streets or something. Um, let's see, where was I? The comments. Um, yeah, I totally lost <laughs> where I was. Um, yeah, there we are. Um, Uh, thanks for pointing it out because I can't really draw from memory. I have to go through sketchbooks to remember what I drew. Yeah, and, and you know that's a, that's a very common misconception that artists try to draw everything from memory. And you know many people are feeling like it's cheating to look at references. And no, 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 no. You should be looking at references. Be it the human body, be it a composition, be it an object, an environment everything just look at reference pictures it will make your life so much easier and it is the best way to improve your artwork and you can get better and faster and that's that's literally only through using reference images uh, Reconius summer of manga has been cool it was a privilege to participate I'm so hyped 107 was the issue I was in also, hey Andrea. Oh, hey, hey. Uh, yeah, I, I've seen you in there. Um, admittedly, I haven't read your short story yet, but I will. And congrats on making it into Summer of Manga. So, so yeah, guys, check it out. <laughs> 107 is already out. It, it just was sent out last night, I think, for subscribers. So, super exciting. Uh, Reconius, I'm liking the cracks and ricks and pillars, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> a lot of cracks, pillars, and everything. And very, very slow process. <laughs> Sokita, I'm not a fan of buying things online, so I was wondering if you guys will ever sell your magazine and manga at retail. Yes, um, it's in progress. Um, so, so yeah, um, yeah, puppy run. <laughs> um, we will make some announcement about retail. It's it's in progress. I can't reveal much about it. But it, it will happen, and um, you know, even if you you don't like ordering uh, books, especially, um, there are many bookstores who actually will order for you. Like you know, if if they don't even have our books, uh, you can still ask them to order. Uh, like e even in Hungary, I, I was kind of surprised because I was walking into a bookstore and they had a sign that hey do you want any book because we can order it for you of course you know all they will do is basically they order it from uh, Amazon or, or you know one of the big sites but nowadays many bookstores are doing it so there's a chance that you can walk into your local bookstore and tell them that hey I would like to order Saigami volume 1 or you know Apple Black or, or you name it and they, they can order it for you because you know that way 
they still can have your money and that's all they need. So I, I think that's something bookstores are doing now to keep up with online uh, platforms. So, you know, if you're interested, um, you can give it a try, like you, you got nothing to lose. Mr. Gerdude, yeah, retail. We literally have an otaku shop here in Norway where you can sell the magazines. Oh yeah, that's, that's cool. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's a small, uh, slow process uh, for us. Once again, you know, we are a small company. We're we are fighting very hard for everything we achieve. Like you know, we we don't have someone just putting money in our pockets to. To let us do whatever we want, so so everything is a slow and slow process. Very, very, very hard work, a lot of work. But you know, we're we're getting there. Like we've been around for over five years now. We have over 100 issues released, and we're still around. By others are going out of business, so everything will happen eventually. And and um, yeah, we're we're working on it. Um, uh, Savage Beer Arts. I always think about music for my series. I would love for the, I would love for the chance to have some themes for my characters, or even an opener. Yeah, I, I, I think music is, is very inspirational. Like I, I always been, I always listen to music whenever I'm drawing and, and yeah, collecting songs, fitting the story, fitting my characters, so I can only recommend the same if, if it helps you getting in the mood, finding that motivation or focus again. And yeah, you know, um, I, I would say that, you know, you can always look for artists who might be interested in collaborating, like, you know, that that's how it started with me and Matthias, that I, I was just reaching out to him, that, oh my god, I love your music, and I, 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 I dare to ask him. And you know, normally I'm not really an outgoing person, but all of the big things I achieved started with me just building up my courage and approaching someone that, hey, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> uh, because that, that's how literally everything started. So, so even if you're you're more timid or shy or not so outgoing, I would recommend that if, if you're interested in doing something or you would like something to happen, just make that first step yourself. Because that, that's how things start out, like that's how literally everything started out for me. You know? Getting my first publication, getting into Saturday AM, getting the music, uh, everything. Just, just started with that one step of making the message. So, so yeah. You got nothing to lose, especially online, you know. And that one message can change everything. Or make a big difference, if not even change everything. Um, Reconius references are good. Learn the anatomy once you do, you can play around with it. Yep. I can only agree. Uh, Normal comic junkie. Hello, I'm back. Nice to have you back. Reconius. Oh, let's zoom out. Wow. <laughs> yep. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't zoomed out that much because I'm working on these small details here. But every now and then we have to zoom out because, yeah. This was the part of the image where I didn't really do much of the planning or sketch. Like, as you can see, for the rest of the sketch, I, I made a bit more sketching or at least more indication of what I want there to be. But this part was just like, yeah, whatever, the other part of this. <laughs> so, so yeah, I literally, this is the part where I need to improvise a bit more. Okay, slowly working out. I'm still having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> the wings are fun. <laughs> Draw at least. Um, 
Let's see, Mega Striker of Lydia, do another Saigam Yard competition on Instagram. I will. Oops. Um, not sure when yet. It might be for Saigami Volume 3, which I really hope to finish up before the year is over. Um, so yeah, there, there will be a competition for sure. I'm just not sure when. But it, it, yeah, it probably will happen in like the last quarter of the year. I'm going to stay tuned and of course, you know, whenever there will be a competition, I will announce it on probably all of my social media platform. I tend to be most active on Instagram. Um, so yeah, I, I would recommend to follow my Instagram if you're interested in news or everything, because that's where I post more often. Um, on Facebook, not really. Like, Facebook is more like an automatic platform for me at the moment. Like, everything I post on Instagram, like proper posts, are going on my Facebook. I think even probably the Instagram stories go on Facebook, but I'm not really sure about that. Probably should be checking that. And I, I also try to be more active on Twitter. Like Twitter is a platform that I use a lot, admittedly. Like recently I've been spending more time on Twitter than on Instagram, because that's where I check out a bunch of news and follow um, Follow the stuff I'm, I'm looking into, like not just news, but you know, some fandoms and series and creators. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I really want to use Twitter more, even though it's it's not my biggest platform. But yeah, so so yeah, just just, just check Instagram. <laughs> it's probably I mean yeah, even if I'm I'm doing a contest, it will be had on Instagram probably. So so that's the sure way to informed about that. Um, Martin Pencilar, Sia, Sia. Um, not your menu is Eddie, because uh, So that was angry and comment saying it is really cool so far. <laughs> so thank you. Um, Cat Boha, even Libri too. Um, yeah, um, I'm not sure about Libri. Um, where I've seen this sign was, uh, shoot, what is it called? It's Lira, Lira ish land in Hungarian, Lira and land. Um, but I'm not sure which book chain that belongs to. So yeah, at the moment I'm not sure about Libri. But, you know, you can always just ask. Maybe they do as well. I mean, you know, if book is online, then you know, you, you know the ISBN. You can look up the ISBN on Amazon. They should be able to do the search. Like heck, even um, actually, when we were uh, at the Crunchyroll Expo, and uh, you know, we, we ordered books for that, but some of the books were just late or couldn't be delivered or something so we didn't have as many volumes of apple black and saigami that we wanted like i, I think even the apple black volumes like arrived a day late so we were looking up some online platform that maybe we could order some books for the convention to go and i remember white manga showing his phone that actually walmart is listing a volume of saigami that they can deliver a volume of saigami and that is totally random that, why do Walmart have Saigami? <laughs> that was kind of crazy. So you, you can never know where, where you can have this option of the store ordering for you. So, so yeah, I, I would say you know, it can be worth asking. Normatomy Junkie. Hey Sunny, I'm having trouble with manga character designs. I don't really know what's too much on a design and what's just enough. Do you have any tips on character designs? Um, but usually, 
my number one uh, advice in character design is that you don't want to overdo it. Because if you're a comic artist, you will have to draw that character every single time. You want them to appear in the comic, and that will mean drawing them at least, you know, four, five more times on a comic page. So if your character is someone who has like hundreds of access stories, you're so gonna hate them by the time you finish a chapter, because drawing them will be just uh, a mess. <laughs> And it will be so time consuming and, and you will forget about small details and, and you forget that oh yeah yeah this character was supposed to have this accessory or that and zippers and bats and all sorts of whistles and yeah it, 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 don't don't overdo it. Of course, you know, it can be kinda hard to find that limit that yeah this is not too much. Um but but yeah try try to think through that well. I'm getting tongue tied here. So try to keep things simplified. Because always think about it, that you will have to draw this again and again and again and again. And you you want to make your things easier because comic drawing is freaking hard. So you don't want to make it even harder just for a cool accessory or just a cool design. Sometimes the less is more, and that is so true for design. And of course, you know, everyone wants to make your character unique and, and, and stand out and all the stuff. But if you think about it, some of the most famous characters have super simple designs. Like, think Luffy. His design is one of the most basic things ever. And it is still unique because he has that one single accessory, the straw hat, that is unique to him. So instead of aiming for like a Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts like super complicated, super ridiculous accessory fill design, try to just go for something simple. Like a single piece of accessory, uh, a hairstyle that can be unique, uh, a silhouette. A silhouette is very important when it comes to design. So so if you think of that and, and try to go for something simple, um, that can still work. Of course, I'm no expert at character designs. I often have trouble with my own characters. Like, if you folks like I mean, you've seen my characters in so many different outfits, and and, and especially I mean, I mean, like when I started Saigami, uh, the first few chapters and my first color artworks was just a mess because I had no idea what I'm going for with Ayumi. I I had no color palette for her. I had no set quoting design, and it was just a mess every time I drew her. Like. Like heck, even my first Saturday M cover, I, I, I made my debut in issue four of Saturday M, and I hate that cover. I hate that cover so much because it's just horrible. Like the clothing and the the color of the the clothing and, and the whole color part of the cover is just horrible, horrible, and so many mistakes were made. Because I had no idea what I was doing, but you know, I was I was wanting to have something cool, something super colorful. So I drew you mean this super ridiculous, like neon colored outfit, and it was just ugh, I, I hate it. <laughs> but you know, later on, I I tried to to look more into these design elements and look for something simple, a simple symbol, a simple piece of accessory um, that is still easy to draw, but it can appear on the silhouette of the character and be something that is sort of unique to that character. So so yeah, what I was going for with my characters is, you know, Ayumi has, uh, for example, the shorts with the ribbons on, which is nothing too complicated, it's super easy to draw, but you know, you just usually don't have those shorts with ribbons, so it is still somewhat unique for her. Uh, for Sean, you know, I gave him that vest and that uh, uh, that necktie thingy that has a name, but I never remember what it is called, which is, you know, still uh, somewhat unique to him and stuff like that. So so I, I tried to, instead of a more complicated design, I tried to go for something simplified. Of course, the outfits will change in Saigami as the story progresses, because, yeah, you already seen uh, artworks I made, uh, where they are wearing more of... Um, 
uh, more of a medieval style, more fantasy style, like armors and and capes and stuff like that. So the designs will change as the story moves in that kind of direction. I don't want to spoil much, but but yeah. So I I will need to draw more complicated designs for my characters in order to serve the story justice. Um. But at the same time, whenever I can, I'm aiming for something simple. And also having uh, a color palette set up for your characters can, can help you a lot. Because, sure, you, you, you can experiment, like, you don't necessarily have to draw them always wearing the same colors. But it surely can make your life easier, especially when you're just starting out and just experimenting with your characters. Martin pencil art. Tudnál lenni majd pár tippet a mangarajzással kapcsolatban, hogy nem igazán megy nekem egy idő, és jó lenne még pár tipp. Uh, hát egyrészt a videóimat tudom ajánlani, mert elég sok tippen végigmentem. Uh, ezeket mindenképpen tudom. Uh, másrészt pedig, hogyha valami konkrétabb tippet szeretné, akkor uh, általában szeretem, hogyha konkrétabb kérdésekkel fordulok hozzá, mert csak így az, hogy így tippeket így általánosságban azt így nehéz mert órákig, napokig tudnék erről beszélni, tehát általában mindig azt kérem azoktól, akik segítségét fordulnak hozzám, hogy konkrét kérdésekkel, és akkor én is konkrét válaszokat tudok adni. De nagyon szívesen. So, I once again had a hungry and comment. Uh, Martin is asking for a few tips and advice uh, about manga driving. So what I told him is that, um, you know, check out my videos because I have a bunch of tutorial videos about drawing manga and all sorts of stuff and apart from that what I told Martin and asked him is that whenever you're asking for help or advice please always specify what you need the advice for or what you need the help with because I receive uh, questions on a daily basis that hey can you give me tips on drawing manga and I'm like sure uh, but I need you to specify because I could be talking for hours and for days about driving manga, about advice and tips and stuff like that. But I just can't afford that. I don't have the time. So if you need help, please ask for the specific thing, and then I can give you the specific answers, and then we can we can help you the fastest and more efficient way without having to go the circles that neither of us need to go through. Uh, Kat Boha. Uh, once I ordered Bungo Stray Dogs from Bookline in German language and it written that it's from Libri and I'm so confused since then. Um, yeah, because uh, I, I think um, I think the, the Hungarian Libri or Hagiman, I think Liran Land are connected to the German Libri, which is one of their bigger, I think. Because yeah, I remember once uh, asking about a certain manga titles that they could order for me and they told me to check out um, the Libri.da, uh, the German Libri site and whatever I can find there they can order for me. So, so yeah, I, I think there are some connections there. Martin Panzerart, egyébként nagyon tetszik a mangát. Köszönöm szépen! Sőlök, hogy tetszik! So Martin uh, wrote that, um, by the way, I like your manga and I can't. I thanked. And I can't English today. <laughs> I really suck at this tonight. Um, now we eat. I want to be a manga artist. Uh, go for it. It's not easy and it's not fun. But <laughs> go for it. <laughs> um, so Kita, I wonder if American comic books and manga will ever do crossover one day. I'm sure fans of both would be troubled. I'm pretty sure that already happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know that they had crossovers with Attack on Titan, and there were some other stuff. Um, and you know, there were even uh, with anime like crossovers. Um, well, not through crossovers, but they did a bunch of adaptations of like Marvel comics and stuff like that. 
So, so yeah, there, there were some tries. And, and yeah, uh, many Japanese manga artists actually were involved with uh, DC and Marvel. Like, I know that Hiro Mashima did some Marvel uh, posters. Like, he even did like a, a crossover with uh, Fairy Tail and the uh, the Captain America Civil War poster. So did Yusuke Murata, the artist for One Punch Man and Last Show 21. He did a bunch of Marvel uh, pinups and stuff like that. So, so there are already some collaborations, if nothing else, on the marketing front happening. And, and yeah. Um, technically, we could say that Kingdom Hearts, the Kingdom Hearts manga is kind of like a collaboration because it is part Disney, part Square Enix, part original manga story, so there's that. And, you know, of course, there have been some smaller collaboration that no one's talking about, like, <laughs> you know, not the big shot titles, but, you know, smaller manga artists with smaller American or uh, European comics collaborating, so there are always things. It's just not, not everything is receiving the spotlight. Uh, not yet. how do you get a art style you want? You just keep drawing and improving. <laughs> uh, you know, this is... Oops. I, I think my answer is always kind of lackluster for this, because people expect that, oh yeah, this is how you get your art style. But what I always answer is just 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 don't focus on your art style just focus on getting better as an artist and your style will improve with that because you will be inspired you need to do studies you need to use references and what you study and what you use the references from will be part of your package as an artist and will become part of your style so Instead of trying to focus the oh, I totally want to draw eyes like Naruto and I want to draw hair like One Piece and stuff like that, uh, I, I always recommend just focusing on improving the art style. Of course, you know, sometimes it works that, yeah, artists just sit down and, and they, they just start thinking up their own style by taking elements from different artists, and I'm not saying that doesn't work. Uh, I'm saying that for me it was never a priority. I always just wanted to get better, and style was something that came with the improvement, naturally. Kedboha, it's so weird when you switch back to Hungarian. Like, I suddenly understand everything you say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I always have Hungarian viewers and I received comments so many times that why don't you do streams in Hungarian so we can understand and I was like I was so guilty because yeah I'm Hungarian but I, I don't really talk to my Hungarian viewers because English is something that everyone understands. I mean I, most of my viewers understand and stuff like that, but yeah sometimes it's very tempting to do Hungarian streams as well, so maybe in the future. Uh, but it is actually very weird for me to speak Hungarian in front of the camera because I'm, I'm so used to talk in English. Switching uh, to Hungarian is like, is it the right language? <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, also, thank you. I thought Libri is only Hungarian. Uh, I thought it was at first, but I, I think yeah, it's, it's that the basic is from Germany. <laughs> um, um, Zoro, nem magyar vagy? De igen, magyar vagyok. Csak a streamben angolul beszélek. So I received another Hungarian question asking if I'm Hungarian, and yeah, yeah, I am Hungarian. I just. Don't really talk in Hungarian during the streams. <laughs> okay, so a few more questions from my Instagram. 
Uh, how do you outline structure your story of each chapter? Um, I usually first uh, just think about an arc for the story. So when I first start to plan out the story, I'm not thinking in chapters because I tend to expand or change things around as I go. So I never sit down that, okay, this will be chapter 16 and uh, things like that. So at first I try to think on, about the story on a bigger scale. Uh, so for example, with the initiation arc, I try not to spoil much, uh, but you know, I had the structure that I knew that, okay, so we will have the first stage of the exam where uh, I really don't want to spoil, but at the same time, in order to explain <laughs> the process, I, I need to throw a little bit of a spoiler. So, so I, I really hope that most of you are caught up with Saigami Volume 2. I promise I won't spoil anything from Volume 3, but I, I hope that Volume 2 is still okay. So, um, for the original thought process with the initiation arc, uh, I, I was thinking that, yeah, first I will have the introduction, then we will have the first stage of... Uh, of the exam with uh, the maze and that's where I will bring in Carly and where she will meet Hayumi and I I, I put down the, the basic that what I want each character to do in the first stage and then I will have some interlude between the two uh, parts of the exam where I don't want to spoil this because that's where the story right now is and then I will have the second part of the exam taking place here, that I'm drawing right now, and yeah, then I had a vague idea that how I want the second part to go and how I want to finish up this arc. So that's how it started, but at that time I had no idea how many chapters I will need. I had a vague idea that I really want to wrap everything up by volume 3, the latest. Originally I only wanted to have volume 2 take up the, the initiation exam. But then I came up with different ideas, and I realized that, yeah, I can do this differently and how I want to do it now, and that's how it went on. Um, so once I had this, this raw storyline, story I decided to break it up, um, not by chapters, but by smaller pieces, and Usually I don't plan by chapters because we're not publishing full chapters in Saturday AM. So usually I'm focusing on installments. So on, on issues of the magazine, which is usually between 7 to 14 pages of content. Um, because I usually try to build up um, each installment in a way that it will have a sort of a cliffhanger or a point where I can end that installment on a note that will want the readers to keep reading. Sometimes I can do that, like sometimes it just ends on not the best spot, um, because I, I, uh, I can't structure it in a way that it will end on a cliffhanger, and it happened before that I just, whoops, what happened there? <laughs> uh, that I just couldn't make my deadline properly, so I just sent in less pages than I wanted. So. It doesn't always work out the way I plan to, um, but usually uh, I, I try to plan with installments. And many times I, I just play around with things and I just throw in things in the last minute, change around things in the last minute. So everything with Saigami is pretty flexible. Like I have the main story points, so I know where I want to go, but I tend to change things around as I go. Um, of course, you know, there, there are uh, a bunch of stuff that I already thought out that, yeah, this is how I want this scene to happen, and I know that I, I need to structure things in order to have that scene in there. Um, so, so usually it's like, you know, I, I have like certain story plot, plot elements here, 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 and then I just have to connect the dots. And, you know, sometimes I'm like, well, I can't really have this, so I'm just gonna skip this, go into this. Sometimes I move things around that, oh yeah, like I, I need more pages for this and I can't have that in this installment. So I'm just gonna move this scene here with this character and I'm gonna jump straight to here and then I will have this happening here. So 
Sometimes it's, it's just overwhelming that I move story elements here and there, uh, changing things in the very last minute, and um, yeah, I, I will have more on this, uh, probably in Volume 3 Extras, because there were some major changes in the story uh, as I went on with Volume 3. Like, some... the storyline for some characters and some events just turned out in a completely different note or a completely different way than how I originally planned, so for me that was a super exciting process that I, I, I really enjoy keeping the story um, or at least building up the structure for the story in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a flexible way because, you know, sometimes you just realize that oh my god, I can do this way better or this is such a such a better idea than what I had or, or you know, sometimes it's just yeah, it's what, what I came up with just doesn't work because it's, it's bad writing or, or you know, it's, it's just not the best message or I can do better. Of course, you know, sometimes even feedback, like, hey, the, the readers are liking this character, so maybe I can give some more screen time to this character. Or, or you know, maybe it's just me that, oh my god, I really love working with this character, so I, I just want to throw them in a little bit more. Or, or you know, I, I just see or hear or read or, or, or just think of something and I'm like, oh, I could use that actually. And sometimes the inspiration or ideas just find me. Um, so, so yeah, I, I, I only plan out the major storyline and story plots, and the rest I, I just build up piece by piece, only focusing on the smaller installments, so like half of a chapter, or a quarter of a chapter, or a third of a chapter, and so far it worked out, because it, it allows me to play around a lot with the story, and I, I don't feel like my hands are tied, and. Uh, and I, I, I like to improvise a lot, um, and I think it works. And, and you know, many times uh, there are foreshadowings. Those are kind of tricky because there were a bunch of things I already foreshadowed in the first two volumes that will only appear later. Or there were things that I started foreshadowing in volume one, and now they they came back in volume two or or, or volume um, three. And and yeah, sometimes it's just connecting those dots that making sure that oh yeah I already did foreshadow this so now I need to add a little bit more for that and, and, and things like that so so yeah it's a lot a lot of planning process at the same time uh, I am making notes of several things to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything important and I also go through the other chapters because sometimes I just come up with something and I'm like well yeah I can use this in the story but it's not like I foreshadow this or anything but I'm like well maybe I can use an old scene to build up something in the future so, so yeah it's a lot of going back and forth uh, with the planning and you know sometimes I, I just get new ideas by going through my, my older pages Sanchez Knights, uh, you need a mod for your Discord. I'm one for Vites as well if you need it. Well, I'm not in charge of uh, any of Saturday and social media, but you know, if you're interested, you can always reach out to uh, to Frederick, and um, he he's in charge of assigning uh, people for various parts of social media or, or anything. So you know, you can always uh, message at info that no info at Saturday AM. No. Shoot, what's the email address? Info at saturday-am.com Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's our email address. So yeah, if you're interested, you can always reach out. And you know, we're always looking for uh, more stuff for social media, designers, um, editorial. So we're, we're always looking for more stuff like that. Ooh, this is bro moment. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Manga Striker, well done, it's 11 
5 p.m. So good night for our Peace Nova Warriors. <laughs> yeah, it's the same time here as well. So this has been going on for quite a while now. It's so weird. Like, oh my god, I I'm still not used to having the end time. This is supposed to be in the afternoon, and here it's the Easter Standard Time. <laughs> Um, Gladys Clearwa, I can't butcher your name, sorry. Uh, your art style is amazing. How long did it take you to get it to where it is now? Um, first, thank you. Secondly, um, I've been drawing the manga for, for a long, long time. I started it when I was 14, 15. Now I'm getting close to 30, so a good 15 years but you know like I said I never sat down that oh I'm just gonna improve my style I, I just kept drawing and and studying the art style and the artworks of creators I like and it just kept changing as I went so probably the last decade <laughs> and you know style is something that's still changing like if you look through my pages you will see that my art style keeps changing and changing as I as I as I improve and I, I change things around. Like compare artwork from Saigami Volume One to Volume Three, and you will see that I I draw things differently now. Like I use some different shading style. I I draw details a little bit differently. I I do more refined eyes or hair and stuff like that. But you know that that's a never changing thing. Like I, I'm always just seeking improvement. At the same time, I'm I'm, I'm looking to get faster with art. I'm trying out new tools, new techniques, and stuff like that, so that's just how it goes. Um, uh, Sanchez Knight, I meant your Discord. Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, I, <laughs> I do have a Discord for my Patreon supporters. Um, so I'm not sure if I, I need an admin there because there's not much of a, a communication going on there. We, we have a, um, a few chats there, um, but mostly I, I use Discord for just like random chat. And I, I know that you can do a bunch of things with Discord. Like I, I've been to Discord to a few fandoms I follow. Um, and at the same time, I'm not sure if I, I can properly provide a commitment to a platform uh, like that so I, I just prefer to to stick to the the old school stuff like posting and these live streams and things like that but but I really appreciate your offer um um you know sorry no face cam uh, not this time sorry I this was a very last minute stream and I, I didn't have my camera out, so... So maybe next time I will set up things properly that I can talk face to face to you guys. Um, Zoro, what is your drawing tablet's name? It's an XP Pen Artist 15.6. This is the older model, so not the Pro. They have uh, an Artist 15.6 Pro, which is the newer model. But this is the older XP Pen. Uh, if you're interested in more in details, I have an unboxing and a review video of it as well. Uh, Sokita, the image is very nice, Andrea. Thank you! I'm happy you enjoyed it so far. Um, let's see... What other questions I have on Instagram? Because I want to make sure that I answer the Instagram questions before I call the stream an end. But I want to keep this under three hours, so I, I can already feel my voice is kind of starting to crack. So, <clears throat> so one other question was, uh, how to learn to make manga quicker? Well, <laughs> that's something that you only get by actually doing it. So if you want to get quicker at something, want to get better at something, the only way is to practice. Because, yeah, the, the more you practice, the more you draw, the, the faster you can get, because with time you will get things kind of be part of your muscle memory. And the same goes for, you know, character designs, environment. Like, you know, right now, 
when I'm, I'm drawing this, I don't need to look at the reference image anymore. Because I already draw so many stuff like this, that I already know how to indicate certain stuff. I, I know how to build um, a ruin building and some of the foliage and everything. But I don't need to look at the reference image anymore, so it is way faster now for me. The same goes for anatomy, you know, right? Like, when I'm drawing, like, you know, most of the times I don't need to look at the reference image anymore because I already practiced anatomy a lot of times that I can do a bunch of poses and, and angles by memory only because it's already in my muscle memory. I, I know how to build it up. I understand how it works. For more complicated stuff, I still look at the press images or, you know, get out of those figurines or do the pose myself in front of the camera and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, you, you can learn a bunch of the basics and that will help you get faster. The same goes for, um, you know, just drawing your characters over and over. For example, when I have a new character, I always need to look at their design artwork because I just can't remember every detail and, you know, I, I, I try to keep it consistent. And, um... You know, with time, when, once I drew a character enough times, I will be able to draw them without having to look at the reference sheet. Because now I can draw that character from memory, and that also will make it faster. This is why probably many manga and anime characters just don't change clothes, because it's a nightmare to give new clothes to your characters, and then you have to remember all the details. And and, he, and yeah, it happened a couple of times with me before that, yeah, I, I, I gave new clothes to the characters, and they were inconsistent, like, you know, there was a certain pattern in the clothes, there was a zipper or a pocket there, and in the next page, boom, it just disappeared, because I just completely forgot about that, and I was in a rush, I didn't look at the reference picture, and yeah, <laughs> there were some serious inconsistencies here and there. Of course, you know, many of those were fixed for the volume release, but sometimes, yeah, it just, just happens. Zoro, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm looking for the pro version. Yeah, the pro version looks really good, like, I, I've seen a bunch of previews about it, and it looks so good, like, like if I were to buy a new tablet, I probably would go for that, because I really love this uh, tablet, like, it's it's amazing, and, uh, and yeah, the pro looks so much better and it already has like field support and everything, more express keys. So I, I can really recommend the e pen because they have really good products. Like, you know, if you can't afford a Wacom, then the e pen can be an absolutely great choice. Because they are really, really catching up to the Wacom standards. And it has a very, very affordable price as well. Gladys uh, Clarova, uh, thanks for the tips. I absolutely love you and your art style. Once again, keep up the good work. You are definitely going places. Well, thank you very much, and I'm happy if I could help you. Once again, I'm not sure what I'm driving. <laughs> like, this happens so many times with this background that what the hell am I even drawing here? <laughs> I mean, as long as it looks good in the big picture, sure. <laughs> um, so, Kita, which is well known for changing the character's fashion? Well, to me it is... Oh yeah, yeah, well, part of each fashion change will also be the art style change, like, like the improvement was so crazy, but but yeah, I literally had a bunch of fashion shots with the, the human clothing with the characters, and yeah, that was really cool, I sure you liked it, like, I, I like Bleach art style a lot. Funnily enough, it's an art style 
that is super hard for me to draw. So whenever I had to draw like bleach studies or bleach fan art, it was so different for me. I I, I did studies a few times, but it's just so far from my style that I, I never even was like, yeah, I need to draw more like bleach because it just didn't mesh with what I had. Savage Beer Arts, I uh, left for food but was still watching from my phone. I'm back at my desk now. Well, thank you for <laughs> keeping up with the stream, no matter what platform you're on. <laughs> uh, Midi Comics, I have a 30 euros tablet and it works wonders. I do all my professional work with it and the latest Photoshop. Well, yeah, you know, um, that's the fun part that you don't necessarily need a, a display tablet to do pro artwork. Like, there are many professional artists who are still using like a Wacom Bamboo or, or you know, some cheaper alternative like a, like an XP Pad or a Hubion tablet that are now, yeah, in, in those price range and you can do professional work with them. So, so yeah, you, you don't necessarily need to go the extra mile and get something super fancy and expensive. Of course, you know, some people just can't get used to non-display tablets. I used to be the same, like I, I used to have Wacom Intuos and some cheaper models before that. And, you know, I could use them for coloring and screen toning and stuff like that, but I never for the life of me could get used to doing line arts and sketches digitally. Because, I don't know, maybe it had something to do with my, um, my coordination problem. But I just never got used to the fact that I'm looking at a different screen and I'm drawing on a different place. So for me that never really worked out. And it was always a struggle. So for me, it took getting this display tablet to feel really comfortable with digital art. And now I absolutely adore digital art and working digitally and and I probably would never go back to traditional anymore because it's just so much better for me. But yeah, not not everyone needs a display tablet, so... Heck, I even heard that some artists actually prefer uh, working on a non-display tablet because they can see what they are drawing better because your hand is not in the way anymore, so... Actually, yeah, I think that was a good point, so... You know, it, it differs for every artist, so... You know, try different things and find your happy medium. Uh, Zero, no problem if I write in Hungarian. Uh, nyugodtan, nyugodtan ír magyarul, hogyha az úgy egyszerű, majd lefordítom úgy is. So, yeah, I, I, I just answered in Hungarian. <laughs> But go ahead, if, if, you, if you write in Hungarian, then write in Hungarian, I can translate. It's not a problem, I'm good with Hungarian. You can probably comment in German as well, because I, I do speak German as well. <laughs> so, I probably would be able to translate those as well. Although I haven't practiced German in like two years now, so maybe... That would be harder, but yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Gladys Clairvoy, are there any computer built in drawing tablets that you recommend? Well, if you can afford it, then the iPad is awesome. Um, I, I surely can recommend that because, yeah. Uh, Those are super comfortable, they have very great software, like uh, they both have Clip Studio and... Um, oh, what is it called? It's super fancy software that is great for coloring and digital painting. Oh my god, what it's called? Oh my goodness. Procreate! Yeah, Procreate! <laughs> Now, that is awesome! So, yeah, but of course, that's like literally the most expensive drawing tool that you can get. So, I, I only recommend that if you if you can afford to invest into one. Uh, the Surface Pro um, is actually not bad. I, I've been doing art on a Surface Pro uh, 3 with the Surface Pen. And that was actually surprisingly good. Uh, especially, you know, if you can get like a newer model, like a Surface or uh, maybe there's one of five, I, I can't remember. But yeah, you know, that's basically the Windows trying to match up the iPad. Um, 
But I really liked about that that it was still a Windows. Like I, I I've been a Windows user all my life, so having a Windows platform there was so much comforting for me because that's what I'm used to. Like it took me a lot of time to get used to Android and uh, and yeah, just just having my good old Windows, even though I know Windows can be crappy sometimes, but still a good thing. So so the Surface is is pretty good and and you know. The good thing is that that can still work as an actual computer. So, you know, with the iPad, it's it's problematic that um, many people are saying that if you want to work professionally with that, you need to send your files through a cloud in order to get them into a uh, a, ser uh, a desktop version of Photoshop or Clip Studio in order to finish them up because there are some restrictions on the iPad. That there are certain things that you need to do. So, so there's that. Um, so yeah, the surface is, is pretty good. Um, I know that the Wacom had like a Wacom company or something, but I didn't hear too many good things about that, so I'm, I'm not sure I never tried that. Um, what I also tried and I have, have is a, a Simmons Picasso tab. I, it's not bad, it's, you know, it's super cheap and for that price it is good for what it is. Uh, I don't recommend that for like professional level work. It's good for doodling and you know like an entry level tablet and getting comfortable with turning the screen and stuff like that. Um, there are also like the Samsung Galaxy tabs I think but I never tried those so I can't really talk about those. But yeah, if, you know if, if you can afford it and you, you want to invest something in the long term then I would recommend either the Surface Pro or, or an iPad or an iPad Pro. The iPad Pro is yeah, it's usually the best, but not necessarily. Um, but if you're if you're more interested, I actually would recommend uh, uh, a YouTuber called Brad Colbo. He's doing uh, a bunch of drawing tablet reviews. He's also uh, an artist, and he he reviews like every single tablet, iPad. Uh, driving tablets and his reviews are really good and very informative so so I, I usually check out his stuff like I, I checked out his stuff before buying the 6p pen as well so I, I can recommend him um Grimheim you can speak German <laughs> yeah <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> and now it's very tempting to speak something in German, but I know that the moment I try, I'll be a mess up. So, yeah, ich, ich kann ein bisschen <laughs> Deutsch sprechen, aber ich bin nicht so gut. <laughs> I used to be, like, completely fluent. Like, uh, like 10 years ago, my, my German was better than my English right now. Because I used to watch German TV all the time. <laughs> and, yeah, German was like a... Like a second mother language for me. But yeah, in the last decade I only been using English, so <laughs> so yeah, it's it's kinda of problematic. Like it was kinda of fun because in the hotel where I I, I, I used to work and I'm back again. <laughs> so in the hotel we have a bunch of German guests. And um, when I, I started to have problems with my German and I never even noticed, but I, I just started to speak in German and the guest answered in English and I was like, wait, what? And he said to me that you never noticed that you switched to English mid-sentence. And I was like, oh my god, I did? <laughs> like, I never even noticed, but you know, it, my mind was just so much set on English that it, it just... It just started with a word like instead of und I said and and then my mind was like switch to English <laughs> or you know I, I just kept messing up like instead of other I kept saying or and you know a, a bunch of words sound really similar in, in English and German so I just kept mixing them up <laughs> it, it was a mess so so I, I still understand almost everything in German and if I try I can speak German still but I'm very slow because I have to process that, okay, I need to speak in German. <laughs> and, and you know, everything comes to my mind in English first and I have to like dial back that, no, no, you're speaking German, girl, now. <laughs> uh, 
Zero. A proverzióban nekem speciál nagyon tetszik, ez a görgős gomb, mert nagyon sok mindenre használható. Egy pocsi, ezt elég nehéz ezt lefordítani, úgyhogy valószínűleg angol ezt valószínűleg érteni fogom. So, uh, Zero commented in Hungarian that in the XVPRAN artist 15 point pro, he, uh, he yeah, Zero, Zero was he, so yeah, <laughs> he really likes uh, that it has like uh, a dial button where you know you can use the dial button for zooming for scaling changing the brass size so that's a pretty cool feature and, and yeah it's even customizable so that that is really neat and i absolutely agree with that <laughs> because yeah mm, i never had a tablet that had a dial button so I, i'm not sure how much i would use like a dial function but yeah i, I certainly can see it working in a very very useful way like yeah especially zooming in zooming out with this artwork i could use the dial button a lot <laughs> okay so now i'm gonna go back to my first layer which was my foreground because here i have like what i had in mind that i will have so zooming out so as you can see, I have stuff in the foreground, the, the details are bigger here and stuff like that. So what I wanted to here is to have like a tree branch coming in here and have like leaves. I'm not sure why I feel like I need to explain it, but yeah, that's what will happen right now. <laughs> and that's why I came back to this layer. Cool. Wonders some digital art. <laughs> and of course for that, I will switch back to this G-Pen, like as you can see I'm using different tools, like this is a way finer G-Pen and this is a bit thicker, more textured as well, so I'm switching back to that and uh, a bigger brush size as well. Um, Rimheim, oh this is <laughs> Oh my god, you sound so cute! <laughs> oh, thank you! <laughs> I try my best. I know, I have a horrible accent, even in German. Like, <laughs> my teacher used to hate uh, my accent, actually. <laughs> um, because I, I never learned German the proper way, only later on. Like, I picked up German only by watching TV. Like, you know, I was 8 years old, I think. And I just sat down and Dragon Ball was on TV and I was like, oh my god, it's Dragon Ball, I got to watch that. But it was in German, so I did not understand the word, but, you know, I was sitting there every day watching Dragon Ball, Pokemon, Digimon, Inuyasha, Sailor Moon and all sorts of stuff in German. And a few years later I was absolutely fluent in German and I could understand everything, but I did not know how to properly write or say things properly. So, uh, so yeah, that, that was kind of fun. <laughs> Like, I, I always drew my teachers nuts, because I understood, I, I understood everything, I could speak German without knowing any of the letters or any of the grammar rules. And, you know, whenever they asked me that why I, I, I put together a sentence like that, or why I choose that answer, and, you know, my answer was always like, because that was the right thing, that felt right. <laughs> and that's literally how German language worked for me. It was just... You know, I just learned it <laughs> on my own. So yeah, that's me and, and German. <laughs> so yeah, thank you, It's a real boy. Okay, okay. <laughs> Grimheim, no, your accent sounds totally fine. <laughs> and your grammar is very good as well. Well, thank you, Zier. <laughs> yeah, now it's very tempting to <laughs> say something more in German, but. <laughs> Maybe this will be the title of this stream. <laughs> We're going like multilingual. That's probably butchering English there, so... <laughs> but yeah, I, I always did enjoy German. 
I also did learn French for eight years, but I can't remember French properly. Like I still can say a few sentences and and maybe understand a few sentences. Especially now spending time in Canada where everything is also written in French. I read it up a little bit, but but yeah, I I was never that good with French. But German I always liked because you know German was my enemy language actually. So so yeah, that, that was my motivation. When I understand anime, then you gotta learn German. <laughs> so it was kind of funny because I learned the first 151 Pokemon in German. So many times when I think about the Pokemon, I still think about them. Like for me, it will always be Bizazam and not Bulbasaur <laughs> because that's how I learned them. <laughs> Some of the German names are just cooler. Uh, savage Beards. I used to speak a little bit of Spanish due to school, but I honestly forgot almost everything I learned. Yeah, I think that's the case with the languages you learn in school. That's sure, you, you learn them while you're in there, but once you're out and you're not using it anymore, you can forget really easily. Like that, that's how uh, my French... <laughs> Eight years of French is just thrown out of the window. And, and that was sad because I was... I, I could communicate very well in French because, yeah, you know, it was eight years plus, you know, there was a time when they just dropped me at the French family for like three weeks <laughs> when I was an exchange student and things went well, I guess. I mean, there were a couple of times when I was talking to the mother of the family in German because she also spoke German, so I was like, hey, <laughs> why don't we just switch over to German, which is easier for me than French. <laughs> But yeah, once, once you don't use a language, it's just... you will forget it. Okay, let's... Take one more look at Instagram. Are there any other questions I haven't answered there? Uh, another question How many chapters did you write when you started Saigami? Now, uh, this is interesting because I started Saigami in 2005. The old, old and very crappy version of Saigami. And for that I actually did 16 chapters. And um, then I, I scrapped the whole project and I, I restructured the story, replanned everything and restarted it as the Saigami it is today. So when I started on working on this remake version of Saigami, I still had that 16 chapter to rely on so it's not like I just started the story from scratch because I knew that certain parts I want to keep from the old version for example in the old version it still started out not the same way but kind of the same way like Ayumi getting the letter she lands in Astria the different world although it wasn't Astria back then but yeah you know she lands in the different world she mets with Sean first they go to uh, the Zen of the clan, the Dragon Taming clan, they meet up with Reggie, they go on a journey and then they take the initiation exam in Zeus, where they also meet Daisuke. So that was um, taken over from the old version. Um, but everything else is literally changed. <laughs> um, so the characters kind of meet in... Well, maybe in the first chapter not that much because yeah, in the old first chapter it kind of went the same way. Yeah, the first chapter is more or less kind of the same. I did include though in the new version that, you know, um, I did bring in uh, Sean's dad and his brother. Um, and, and of course, better world building and actually showing the place. In the old version I did not have any backgrounds and stuff like that, so, so there was that. Um, but yeah, the whole uh, ambush in the second chapter went down completely differently. 
uh, in the old version, the wall history and the meat was different in the old version. Uh, Zhao's Daisuke's backstory is different than in the old version. And the initiation arc, like the exam, is completely different than in the old version. Uh, the old version was super lackluster, uh, it was super rushed, so I, I restructured that completely. And um, of course, you know, I, I did bring in some characters. Like in the old version, I only showed Lance um, in chapter 15. Here he appeared early in the story. Um, if, if you follow the story, you, you know who I'm talking about. So, of course, I don't want to go into more detail with him. Uh, oh, and of course, uh, comparing the, the old 16 chapter was already in the arc that is supposed to come after the Wall Zeus arc. So, so in the old version of Saigami, the initiation exam ended in chapter 8. <laughs> in the new version, it only started in the 10th chapter, so, so you can already see. Uh, there are quite a lot of differences here and there. Uh, in the old version, I did not have Carly, for example. So Carly was a completely new character coming in with the new version. And of course, it's kind of fun because her storyline did change a lot. Um, as I went on with these chapters, she, she was supposed to have... Uh, let's just say a different fate. <laughs> Uh, in the story than how it ended up for her and how things will go for her, but I, I don't want to spoil. I know people already hate me about that, but yeah, so... So, so yeah, um... So yeah, I, but when I, when I started this remastered version, actually I did not uh, plan everything as I went, so... I, I, I was only focusing on chapter by chapter, and of course I, I was restructuring a bunch of things that will happen later on in the story. So once again, it's like how I structure a chapter or an arc that uh, there are some major plot points that I know that those are like the mini goals that I want to reach and everything else is connecting the dots in the best way. Um, and yeah, sometimes it just changes completely. Um, many times, you know, it's, it's improvising. <laughs> or changing things as I go, but there are certain scenes and certain elements of the story that I had planned out from the very beginning. And uh, many, many things are set in stone about how the story will go, like, um, even, even later on, that I, I just can't reveal it yet, like, certain, for certain characters, like, certain connections, relationships, certain twists and reveals, uh, th those were already set in stone from the very, very beginning. Not the ending. <laughs> I did change the ending as I went. Now I have the ending set. Um, but that was, yeah, quite a struggle. But yeah, the ending had completely changed compared to the old version. So, yeah. <laughs> that, that was a little bit of a build-up. <laughs> um... Zoro, uh, melyik a kedvenc animéd a sajátodon kívül? Te mondan el tudod mondani, hogy miről szól, mert első nekem eléggé bejön a dolog, gondolkozok a megvár megvásárlásán. Nem tudok magyarul olvasni. Uh, a kedvenc animém a uh, IQ. <laughs> uh, so Zoro is asking, uh, what is my favorite anime? And of course the answer to that is IQ, <laughs> which is just awesome. I freaking love IQ. And once again, for the record, I know no one believes me, but not for the pretty boys. Haikyuu is an amazing sports story with super awesome character writing. It's just, it's just really good. I'm, I'm not in for the pretty boys. <laughs> um, and he's also asking if I can uh, talk briefly about the plot of Saigami. Uh, or at least I, I think about Saigami. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Translating Hungarian, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, because he's interested in in buying it, so he you can say he's like bi curious. <laughs> um, so the plot for Saigami is, if I want to pitch it, 
is imagine it as Inuyasha meets Legend of Korra. So even if it hurts to say, I need to say that it's an isekai, <laughs> even though it came before the old isekai boom. Um, so the main story is that we have a main character, Ayumi, from our world, and she lands in this fantasy world uh, of Astria, where she meets... <clears throat> I really suck at describing my own story! <laughs> Uh, so in this new world she meets uh, new people, fantastic creatures like dragons and all sorts of stuff. So even though it's cool, she, she wants to find a way home. So in order to find a way home, she goes on a journey with two um, young men who are both Saigami. Saigami are um, uh, very special... Um, I'm having a brain fart here. So Saigami are individuals who have control over the Astra stream, which is a power flow in this world. And thus they have some supernatural and elemental powers. And she goes on this journey with them, but as she goes on this journey, she has to realize that maybe she has some more things to do with this world and uh, gets tangled up more into this whole Saigami and everything matters, so now she needs to find a way home, needs to find out who she really is and where does she belong, because things might not be how they looked at first. Me trying to be very mysterious and not spoiling everything, <laughs> but if you're interested you can read the first three chapters online, you can find a link in the video description or on my homepage, so you can read it um, for a test. Also, switching back to Hungarian, a film is az anime addix oldalára az első fejezet, és, az, és azt hiszem a második fejezetnek az első fele. Fönn van magyarul is. Úgyhogy bele tudsz nézni. <laughs> magyarul is, hogyha szeretnél. Alrighty, switching back to English. <laughs> After a very, very failed attempt of describing my own story. <laughs> I always fail at that. Like, at this point, I should have memorized, like, what the story is about and how to sell it to people, but it's just... I suck at marketing big time. But yeah, if any of you are interested in Saigami, just please give it a read on, on, on my homepage, because, you know, the first three chapters are free to read, and it it's better to read it than me trying to explain it because yeah it's, it's the kind of story that relies more on the characters and the atmosphere of the world than the super unique kick off of the story so i, I always recommend people to just just read it and and then it will be easier to understand what kind of story you're getting into than me trying to describe it. Vukan <laughs> uh, Comics, as a student when I lived in Germany, an episode of Dragon Ball was on TV. I never forget the episode where when Piccolo shouted at Gohan, how the clap with the coin <laughs> was in poop. <laughs> oh yeah, German dub at its finest. I actually love Dragon Ball's German dub. <laughs> like, it's probably my favorite. Like, even compared to Hungarian and English dub, and Japanese is just super weird. But I really love the German dub for, <laughs> for Dragon Ball. <laughs> and yeah, I, I actually really love how in the German dub, they sometimes just threw in like English words. Like, even, uh, even with the songs, like, uh, the Digimon songs I absolutely love even today. And and this this is something that no one in America will understand because the Fox Kids version changed everything about Digimon that they could. Like I'm 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 still having an argument about this with my husband Peter that he never saw Digimon as it was meant to be seen because the American version sucks. And I'm willing to fight everyone on that. <laughs> Because the original Digimon, the Japanese, and the German Digimon was based on the Japanese version. So the original Digimon songs are just incredible and I absolutely love it. And 
and, and Digimon had such a great story and, and the American dub is just what the hell was going on there like it was super goofy and they changed many of the conversations and they changed the music completely like of course you know if that's how you got into Digimon then, then the, 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 the Bob the Digimon song is what you grew up with and that's Digimon for you but the original Digimon has so many great songs and I so freaking love them and I still listen to German Digimon songs <laughs> and yes I'm 30 almost 30 <laughs> but I, I still know all of the G Digimon songs by heart <laughs> and it was super funny because you listen to German songs and then they just throw in a line that get up and fight and then continue to sing in German <laughs> <laughs> and that is probably, I guess, something that they took over from the Japanese version because the Japanese love to throw in some English phrases as well. <laughs> but it, it was super funny. Uh, Tally, uh, same I learned French in high school and it should come natural because my family is from Haiti, but my brain wants to stick to English because everything French went out the window. Yeah, yeah, exactly, like, it's so easy to forget a language when you're not using it. So, do they speak French in Haiti, by the way? I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too familiar with that country, like, I actually never really thought about that, what kind of language do they speak there, so... But I guess that kind of makes sense. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Jerju, speaking of haikus, getting a new art style. Uh, stay more true to the manga. Yeah, I actually was um, was surprised to see that they completely changed the character designs for the upcoming season. And um, and yeah, that that's nice that they are, are sticking to the manga. You know, many many people don't really like the new art style of the manga because it's not so refined as the old version or, or the early version. But I, I think it, it fits. Um, and of course, you can see that in order to keep up with the weekly serialization, the artist just had to simplify the art style in many places. Plus, I think the new art style kind of shows the growth of the characters better. Like, they, they look more mature. Um, <clears throat> um, like, not... well... There's not much time passing by, but, um, you know, some of the characters are not so naive anymore. They get more experience, and, and even physically. Like, in the new designs, they look uh, more bulky and and everything. So I, I think that will match the upcoming arc of the story. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm super excited for Haikyuu Season 4. Um... Aura Dragon, hello there, hello! Uh, Cat Boha, I don't know if you want to kill me, so So I just received the angry and comment that, let's just be honest, <laughs> how can you have some hot dudes? <laughs> and yeah, you know, I'm not saying that there are none, because yeah, sure, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, there are some hot dudes in Haikyuu and yeah, you know, one of my favorites is like Hava, who's a hot dude. Even in the story, he's he's Mr. Handsome and Mr. Popular with the girls. <laughs> and of course, yeah. <laughs> um, but primarily, I did not get into Haikyuu because of the pretty boys, but because I really did enjoy the story. And I've been following Haikyuu since day one. The, the, since the first chapter of the manga came out, I've been following Haikyuu and I, I've been loving it. But yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> there are some pretty dudes in there. <laughs> And of course, everyone has anime crushes, so... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, yes. <laughs> Oikawa is hot. Kagayama is so... also. <laughs> so... <laughs> but 
still, Haikyuu has really good character writing and good action, and the anime has beautiful animation and soundtrack, so I can only recommend it. <clears throat> Millie Comics, Saiga Myth is very original and not a copy of anything. That is so great thing to achieve. Thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm always super like flattered when, when, when people tell me that. Because, as you could hear, I fail at describing Saiga Myth. So, whenever I try to describe it to people, they are like, yeah, sure. <laughs> because I... I the way I describe it, it doesn't sound like anything special or anything too original. Um, but like I said, I, 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 my, my priority and, and what I try is, you know, writing the characters in a way that Saigami is a story that relies on the characters. And I try to... I'm trying to say a sentence right now. <laughs> I can properly. So, so yeah, I'm still trying to, to think about like the next Death Note story or anything. I I try to focus on the characters, make them relatable, make the character drama, the character development feel exciting and real and relatable. And um, and I think that's you know in in Shonen manga they tend to focus more on action, and shoujo manga they tend to focus on on the romance more. So. I think it's it's even rare to find stories that are purely focusing on on the character build up. Most of the size of life is that that focuses on that, but it's I think it's rare to see uh, a good character focused shonen manga. So I, I think that that might be also a unique factor in Saigami. Plus, you know, the fact that it's basically like a hybrid of shoujo and shonen manga both the art style wise and both the storytelling so it's not really an action manga but at the same time it's not really like a slice of life or romance focused manga so uh, I'm always trying to to go for that unique my kind of style of storytelling with it that is influenced by both that isn't really either But yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to pull out of that thing, so thank you very much. <clears throat> um, and now I scroll too much because I don't know where I'm in the comments. Oh, there we are. Um, so Kita, which is what inspired me to draw? Yeah, I think which was inspiration for many, so... That's cool. Mr. George dude, Bleach is an awesome series despite its part after the Soul Society are being a bit questionable. Um, but fun nonetheless. Um, yeah. It's kind of funny because for me, I enjoyed the Wacomondo art the most <laughs> in Bleach. Of course, it was way too long and there were so many finds that I just didn't care about it at all, but at the same time, you know, I really, really liked Grim Joe and Ukiora, and I guess after this I can't even try to say that, yeah, I wasn't into the whole that I was totally into Ukiora and <laughs> Grim Joe, they were just super hot and cool, <laughs> and I, I like them as villains, I, I think they were interesting villains. Um, Plus, I was always shipping Ichigo and Orihime, so to me that was kind of closer to my heart than rescuing Yukia, but at the same time, the Soul Society arc was amazing. Like, it had so many great twists, and, and the world build up was, was amazing, and, and probably one of the best twists ever uh, in, in shonen manga. So, so yeah, I, I can absolutely see why that is superior uh, for many. It's just, you know, Yuakimondo arc for me had some factors that <laughs> played closer to my heart. But yeah, I absolutely agree that Beach should have stopped after the Wakamundo War because it was just a long, long ride downhill afterwards, in my opinion. It's still super sad that the anime didn't come, though. I mean, that the anime did not end the way the manga did, like, you know what I mean. I just can't English anymore. 
Mr. Jojo, the first OP of Bleach is really what makes the series really memorable to me. Yeah, that was like a super unique opening for anime. Bleach usually had very good openings, like almost all of the Bleach openings were pretty cool. Um, for me, of course, I musically the first opening wasn't really my favorite. It's still the most memorable, probably. But I was more into the Aqua Times openings. Like my favorite beach opening is Alone's. I just love it so much. <laughs> uh, Sakita, my favorite beach endings are 25 and 27. Yeah, I can't remember which ones are those, but it had some pretty good endings too. <coughs> The German version of Naruto is just hilarious. It censored literally everything, but it was so funny. Oh my god, I've seen a few episodes of that. <laughs> like, uh, actually, we, we had the same version in Hungary too. Like, we had two versions of Naruto, actually. We had that crappy censored version, and later on we had the proper, both from the Japanese version. <laughs> but I've seen the German version, and oh my god, it was just, like, literally. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, even the, the pronunciation of the names were super funny in German, probably because I've seen Naruto in, in Japanese first. Uh, and yeah, when, when, you know, when they are calling out for Sasuke and they are like Zazuke. <laughs> so I was like, oh my god, I freaking love the German dub for this. <laughs> yeah, but the censorship was just something crazy, like, oh my god, and, and we, we thought that four kids one piece censorship was the worst. <laughs> um, Zoro, all the best handball anime ever. I didn't expect that. Um, expect uh, before the usual answer for the example. Attack on Titan because of Levi. <laughs> Levi. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm actually really into sports anime. <laughs> um, so I, I have a lot of sports anime among my favorites. Uh, I really like Attack on Titan as well. Um, I'm not really enjoying the manga anymore. It's uh, it's been kind of downhill for me lately. Uh, but the anime I, I love a lot, like A, it's Studio Lead, B, it's Hiroyuki Samano's music and I just freaking love everything he does. And, and yeah, I, I think that the Attack on Titan anime is just beautiful and it's amazing and it's probably on my top 10. And, and yeah, I, <clears throat> I really like it. I still have to catch up with the anime because I haven't seen any episodes of the new season. And I heard that it was really, really good, so I'm looking forward to catching up with it, but... But yeah, I need to catch up. <laughs> I just haven't watched any anime, like, ever since coming back to Hungary, I, I haven't even seen any of my regular animes from this season, so... I really need to catch up on anime and on shows to watch. At least I was Stranger Things because I was afraid of spoilers, so I quickly binge watched that at work. <clears throat> um, so, Kita, Ichigo running to the Soul Society as they showed the Shinigami's Aizen and his army of Espada is fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to recall that, that footage. I probably rewatch Bleach. Like, Bleach is one of those animes that I can just put it in the background and draw while just listening to it, not really paying that much attention to the screen. It's pretty cool because I've seen Bleach with Hungry and that as well. The Hungry and that was 
pretty good uh, for Bleach as well. The English dub is really good, I really like that one as well. So yeah, Bleach is it's one of my background enemies. <laughs> Should be watching this. <laughs> like, there are a few enemies that I've seen way more times than others. Not just because they run on TV, but yeah, because I, I can easily watch them in the background. <clears throat> because it's just so easy to, to watch series that I already know they have dubs that I can understand properly. And yeah, sometimes it's just better to draw by listening to. To anime than the music. Sometimes it, it, it helps me focus. Sometimes it's not because I just end up watching it. Like uh, I've been rewatching Ruby now many times while drawing and, and you know sure sometimes I'm just I'm just okay listening to it but then an awesome fight scene comes up and I'm like oh my god I need to watch this. <laughs> so that not, not, that's not really helping my progress. Okay let's save. Uh, Buchan Comics, uh, the German anime dubs are great, often better than the English dub. German One Piece is pretty cool. Yeah! Yep! 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 I absolutely agree with that. Like, I absolutely love the German dub of One Piece. And, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I actually, uh, you know, they, they changed a few names or they are pronouncing them differently. And, yeah, for me, whenever I'm watching One Piece, um, uh, in a different dub, I just can't get used to Luffy. Because for me, Luffy is Ruffy. Because I was watching One Piece with the German dub and, and, and many things. For me, it's the original for me is the German dub because that's how I first seen One Piece. <laughs> like, it was so weird when after watching the German, I was switching over to the Japanese version to catch up with the series. And they were talking about the ship, and they were like, going merry, and I was like, what the heck is the going merry? That's the flying lamb. <laughs> because in the German version, they call the first ship the flying lamb. And, you know, that was an English name, so I was like, yeah, that's surely the name of the ship in the original as well. And I was like, shit, it's not. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that was kind of interesting. Uh, Ricardo Duran, not gonna lie, a lot of Spanish dubs are really bad. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> uh, but you know, at least having a dub is kind of nice, I mean... <laughs> yeah, but, but if it's a bad dub, then... I I'm not sure what's worse, not having a dub at all or having a bad dub. <laughs> because some dubs are just indeed horrible. Like, Haikyuu's American dub is just horrible. Like, I started to watch Haikyuu with the American dub and it was just so super cringy that I just quit, like, I'm like, nope, I'm out! <laughs> uh, Sokita, actually I heard the Spanish dub to Naruto is pretty good for his, for the exception of Boruto, I hate his Spanish voice. Yeah, I can't add anything to that! <laughs> Mr. George Jude, Hiroyuki Sabano is a legend. Oh my god, yes, he is. I so freaking love his works. He, he's incredible. Uh, Zoro, bye bye, I go to have a dinner because I am became so hungry. Well, enjoy your meal. <laughs> uh, Speed, hello, Miss Andrea. Did I spell your names right? Sorry if I didn't. No, you, you did spell it the right way. <laughs> So hello, <clears throat> Aaron Johnson. Which one you like better, traditional art or digital art? Well, I have to say that I now do like digital art better. Um, I've been a traditional artist for the last 14, 15 years, and I was like a diehard traditional artist. Like I was doing everything the traditional way, even when it would have been easier. Uh, digitally, but I was just so much into traditional, but then I decided to switch over to digital and ever since then it's my jam. Um, so yeah, it's it's faster most of the times, not always. Uh, more comfortable and many things are just 
easier and more relaxing and more options. And one of the biggest aspects is cheaper. <laughs> way, way cheaper. Which was a huge factor for me. And the puppies are running again. Um, so yeah. Of course, I still do miss traditional. There are certain things that I think traditional is just better or some things just cannot be replicated um, or not in the same way um, but yeah now um, I became a, a full-on digital artist and I've been liking it more <clears throat> Uh, Aaron Johnson, you like Western animation and anime? Um, I I do not watch too much Western animation. Um, like uh, a few shows, maybe like uh, the one we've been watching last was Final Space, which was hilarious. So I, I really like that. Uh, I never watched any of the Cartoon Network shows or any any thing of that nature, so I never was into those. Um, but some of the Western animes, uh, like um, Avatar, Aang and Korra, I love those. And Ruby uh, from Rooster Teeth is one of my biggest favorite. Like, especially like recently, I've been so much into Ruby again. Like, oh my god, there's so much. I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> Uh, um, I'm super into to Ruby. Um, apart from that, um, mm, nothing really comes to mind right now. Like I, I've seen a few episodes of like more of like adult animation, like you know BoJack Horseman. A few episodes of Family Guy, Rick and Morty. I never really got into those uh, series. You know, if I if I watch a few episodes, I'm, I'm having fun with them, but I, I haven't sat down that oh okay now I'm gonna watch all of the episodes of Simpsons or South Park or things like that because I I, I never really had an access to them uh, because I never had a cable TV here in Hungary and all of these were running on cable TV. Um, so so yeah, but but some of these more famous bigger American or or uh, Western. Uh, animations and anime, I, I, I do And yeah, there are, there are a few more that I, I want to look into. Um, like, I, I want to look into uh, the Dragon Prince more because I've seen the first season and that was pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, I really can't English today. <laughs> I'm mixing up words. Um, I, I've seen a bunch of posts and fan arts of She-Ra and Voltron, so I've been eyeing with those. That maybe one day if I will have the time, I will look into those. But you know, it's it's always kind of scary to get into a new fandom because yeah, especially when they have a bunch of seasons, it's it's kind of hard to to catch up with them. So so yeah. Plus, um, the the more scary thing is that I'm a binge watcher. So if I get into something, I, I just will binge it. And <laughs> at the moment I just can't afford getting hooked on a series and just binge watch like six seasons of something or... Y you get the idea. Um... Spade, what would be a good way to build up Two characters that. Um. Well, I would say, but well, it kind of depends on the story and the importance of the character. But what is the most important, I think, is that you don't want it to feel cheap. Like I think the worst character death is that only happens for a shock value. Like you don't want to just kill off a character for the sake of saying that hi. Hey, in this story, characters are dying, or hey, I have the balls to kill off a character. Um, because that, that will feel cheap. Um, and, and you know, the readers will feel that, yeah, this is only happening for the sake of happening. 
or for the sake of being edgy or you know, things like that. So be, be very, very careful with that. Um, you know, there are cases when you can feel uh, the build up towards a character death. Like, you know, there, there are a bunch of cliches when, you know, a character is talking about the future stuff, a dream, or, oh yeah, after we are over with this, we're gonna go to the beach, and yep, yep, you're not gonna go to the beach, <laughs> you're gonna die, uh, and things like that. Um, so that's one way, because sometimes it works that even though the build up and you know that the character is going to die, it still will <clears throat> mess you up when, when the certain character dies. Like I've seen a bunch of stories and enemies where you know it's coming, but nothing can prepare you for that. And I think that is just incredible because because yeah, you you want your readers to connect uh, with these characters to. To, to care about them, to feel concerned, and and you know you you want their deaths uh, to be meaningful, uh, not just for the story but for the readers as well. Because yeah, that, that's the right way I think to kill off a character. It, it has to it has to be a part of the story or the the story of the character. Um, of course, you know sometimes people just die. And with some stories, it works really well. And we've talked about Attack on Titan here, because many of the characters, they just die. It's just shocking, but it works for that series in a great way, because it's it's gruesome, it's realistic. It it shows us that, yeah, humans are fragile beings, and sometimes she just hits the fan, and people are just dying without fulfilling anything, without having a proper character development, without even us knowing their names, and boom. They are just dying. Um, the same did work um, in Game of Thrones, which was also a very, very realistic and, and yeah, of course, many of the deaths are just for shock value, but the shock value did work with that series. Um, but that's, you know, those are two examples that are outstanding on, on so many levels. So I think it's it's very dangerous when people are like, well, I'm gonna do something like Game of Thrones and Attack on Titan, and I'm gonna be killing off a bunch of characters, and yeah, it, it won't work out for everyone. So it, it, it needs to have a proper build up. But more importantly, I think just focus on writing the character and um, and yeah, build, building up the character uh, before you think about how you will kill them off. Because there's no point in in doing like a huge dramatic death when the reader just doesn't doesn't give a damn about that character, because then the death will just be empty and it will just can we just move on? Um, Aaron Johnson, who's your favorite artist? Um, um, this is always a trick question. <laughs> like, the, who's the favorite? Was the favorite? And I'm a blank. I can't remember. Um, probably go with Hiro Mashima because, yeah, he has a very special place in my heart. Even though he's doing a lot of fan service and a bunch of questionable writer writing choices and everything, but I really, really like his artwork. I also really like the artwork for Haikyuu, so I really like Haikyuu's artist as well. I like a lot of artists. But yeah, the first one to come to mind was Hiro Mashima, so I, I'm gonna go with him. <coughs> I'm gonna go my ear. Oh well. <laughs> Doesn't need my ear anymore. Um, Mr. Jerzud, I think Naruto had a bit of a problem killing off characters like Asuma. Sokita, actually, Asuma's that helped with the character of Shikamaru. Um, yeah, I um, I actually liked uh, the part of the story. Um. 
I really need to reread Naruto's manga. Like I read the the old, like the first part of Naruto, but I really need to reread Shippuden as well. Because I remember liking that part. Like it was a good character development for Shikamaru. On Azuma's end, yeah, we we didn't really get to know Asuma. Like he he didn't really have much of a role. Like you could see that he was brought in because yeah he he was teaching Naruto on mastering the wind chakra. So suddenly he became important before being killed off. So I yeah I can say that the build up there was kind of rushed maybe. Like you know if, if we we've had seen like more interaction with him and his team. Like, we've, we've seen these interactions with Shikamaru a lot of times, but... But yeah, but overall I think that was... that was a good arc in Naruto. And, and yeah, well, Shikamaru was one of my favorite characters in Naruto, so... So I, I liked his, his improvement there. Of course, I, I think they did a different thing than I don't know anymore. <clears throat> yeah, so um, Mr. George dude, and I'm happy for that. It's just that it felt like he got more fleshed out for the sake of killing him off. Yep, yep, I, I felt the same way about that. But yeah, suddenly he was there for more and then, yeah. Uh, and I think that's kind of a problem with a lot of stories that you can feel that, oh yeah, this character is gonna die because suddenly we're focusing on them. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, it's better to just fix on the character build up and if they happen to be killed off, then yeah. Um, Spade, so in contrast to my previous question, what would be a good way to introduce a new character? Well, it depends on the type of story and the type of character and the role of the character in general. Because, you know, you can introduce a character in a very casual way, you can introduce a new character with a bang, you can introduce a character with a twist. Um, it, it really depends on the story, the character and what kind of connection and role that character will play in the story, how will they affect the main character. Um, there are good and bad examples for both, <laughs> or all of them. So, so yeah, it's, it's kind of kind of hard to answer. Um, you know, sometimes maybe you, you want to bring in a character in a way that's not flashy at all. They, they are just starting out as a background character and eventually they they turn out to be more than than just a, someone from the crowd uh, maybe you know you you want the character to start out with like oh yeah giving them the feeling that they will be important there are no right or wrong answers here and no rules um yeah it can be done many 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 different ways Mr. Jer, do you remember when Shikamaru's cigarette got censored in the manga, this version? Oh yeah, and I think they even censored it in the anime. In the anime, they, he, he just lit the cigarette, but never, never put it in his mouth. So, so yeah, that, that was interesting. But yeah, in, in the original manga, I think that was a nice touch. Even though I understand that, yeah, you, you can't really show a smoking teenager in the kid's manga, but yeah. Aaron Johnson, uh, what's your favorite manga? I have a lot of favorites. Um, once again, Haikyuu <laughs> is one of my biggest favorites. Uh, so is Ravemaster. Um, I really like Fairy Tale. Um, really like Naruto. Um, I really like um, from shoujo manga. I really like Vampire Knight uh, and Oh Ride. Um, 
<clears throat> what else? I, I like Full Model Alchemist. I really like Scat Dance. I really. From the re more recent mangas, I really like Act Age and um, Astral Lost in Space. Word Trigger. And yeah, probably a bunch of other manga that I can't recall at the moment. But yeah, I have a lot, lots, and lots of favorite mangas. <clears throat> Sokita. Well, there wasn't much to know about Asuma. He was once part of a temple, he was ignorant of what the king is, and he loved Kuranai. I don't think Kishimoto could have done any more with him. Well, yeah. <laughs> he was never really intended to be like a main main character. I think his build up felt more forced in the anime because they brought in a bunch of fillers. Suddenly focusing on Asuma and on the Twin Temple or Fire Temple, what kind of temple was that? I can't remember. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Spade. Yeah, introduce a character with a bang like Zekka from Alita Last Order. Yeah, I haven't read any of the Alita mangas, so I'm not sure about that character. <laughs> I've seen the movie though, that was pretty cool. I'm not sure how, how the fans of the manga reacted to it. I never really read too many reviews or anything. But I think it wasn't too bad. <clears throat> oh, it's quite optimistic me of me to say that I will finish this page in this stream. I probably won't. <laughs> And even though I really do enjoy this stream, and I really want to finish this page, I just looked at the clock and we've been doing this for now over three and a half hours. <laughs> so I probably should call it an end. Even though I feel like I could do this for hours, but I should be taking a break. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of feeling that I'm getting slower with the talks as well. Alrighty, so I think I answered all of the questions <laughs> that I had on Instagram. So, yeah, once again, <laughs> you will be able to read this installment of Saigami and hopefully she won on 8 of Saturday AM. Issue 107 is just out for subscribers. You can read issue 106 on Saturday AM homepage for free. And please, if you do, vote. Um, and yeah, you can find all of the important links uh, in the video, the video info and on my uh, social media channels. Like uh, for my other social media, I'm most active on Instagram, Twitter. I also do have a Facebook. Um, you can also check out Saturday AM on various platforms, join the Amino apps, so check us out on Toonmoji, which is a super fun new app. We have some new collaborations and super exciting news coming. <laughs> and yeah, don't forget that you can read the first three chapters of Saigami online for free on my homepage. You can also get the first two volumes of the series. You can get them on every online platform, Amazon, Book Depository, you name it. Um, I also do have a Patreon where you can support me for extra content, like more uh, behind the scene content, extra fun arts, uh, tutorials, uh, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can check it out and, and if you want more content then your support is much much appreciated but also uh, if you subscribe to Saturday AM through my link uh, you are supporting me directly 
with the subscription and you also will get Saturday AM which is the world's most diverse manga anthology and we have new issues coming out during the summer we have new issues coming out every two weeks and after the summer of manga is over we will go back to a monthly schedule but now with the subscription model you also get Saturday PM which is or more mature um, more not necessarily adult content but more of a refined more mature type of content which is also a pretty interesting read with amazing new artists and new series coming so it is definitely worth checking out so yeah and like I said the next week will be pretty busy because I'm going to a convention but I will make sure to keep you guys updated so check out my Instagram I probably will post most on Instagram during the convention probably on Instagram stories and probably will make some proper posts and yeah there will be narvals <laughs> so yeah that's pretty much it for this stream I'm really happy that you joined me for this fun evening or afternoon for you guys in the Americas <laughs> or other time zones and I hope you enjoyed this process and yeah i try to be back with another stream and more edited video content pretty soon so once again all of the links you can find on all of my social media platforms and in the video description as well so thank you very much for joining me for this stream and i see you guys in my next video uh, good night <laughs>